National Defense Commission on Appointments, Representative Ferrer the Fourth, Acting Chairperson Senator Panfilo Lacson, Vice Chairpersons Agarau Jr., Alvarez Jr., Heron, Go, Mento the Third, Tolentino, Calcas, Chipeco Jr., Ponteveros, Marcos, Noel, Pancho, Po, Ramirez Sato, Revilla Jr., Villar, Subiri, Zamora, Almario, Villanueva, Rilon, Present, Advincula, Present. With one member physically present and 17 virtually present, the chair declares the existence of a quorum. Majority Mr. Chairman, I move to dispense with the reading of the minutes of the meeting held on August 24, 2020, and considered the same as approved. Is there any objection? Hearing none, the motion is hereby approved. Esteemed members of the Commission on Appointments, distinguished guests. Yes, yes Senator Drillon. Okay. okay. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. As the Vice Chairperson of the Committee on National Defense and upon direction of the Chairman of the Committee, Congressman John John Ferrer, I'm calling this public hearing to order. Today, we are tasked to deliberate on the nomination of Lieutenant General Gilbert Gapay, the newly appointed Chief of Staff of the Forces of the Philippines, to the rank of General, along with the other 29 at interim appointments of senior officers in the armed forces of the Philippines that we were submitted to the committee's jurisdiction for its consideration. Mr. Secretary, please stand up as your name is called. Jaime Ardatuin. Thank you. Hilario Rivera Jr. John De Villa. Stephen Tobalia, Jose René Nartates, Filomeno Carrion, Emerson De Los Santos, Rogelio Jerico Bonagua, Frank Mananquil, Rolando Paredes, Maria Noel Tolentino, Levi Carane, Mateo Carido, Marcel Di Maporo, Romel Marcos, Ariel Paliso, Edwina Lucrecia Taylor, Stephen Cabanlet, Saldi Dioneda, Dennis Hernandez, Joel Lasso, Joseph Torres, Alan Gorapa, Aysen Perdido, Enerito Lebeco, Alfredo Rosario Jr., Jose Faustino Jr., Franco Nemesio Gacal, Gilbert Saret, Gilbert Capay, Yeah. Finally, report on the jurisdictional requirements and other pertinent information relative to their ad interim appointments and nomination in compliance with the new rules of the Commission and the new rules of the Standing Committee. Mr. Secretary. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Your Honours. All the appointees and nominees have complied with the submission of the documentary requirements as provided for in Section 24, Chapter 6 of the new rules of the Commission. Likewise, on various dates, their ad interim appointments and nomination were referred by the Senate President and CA Chairperson Vicente C. Soto III 
to the Committee on National Defense, pursuant to Section 16, Chapter 5 of the New Rules of the Commission, and were published in two newspapers, general circulation, and broadcast over PTB4, pursuant to Section 2, Article 2 of the New Rules of the Standing Committees. On September 1, 2020, your secretary, your secretariat received a letter from the office of the deputy chief of staff for personnel J1, Major General Adriano Espres Jr., addressed to the committee chairman, Representative Luis John John Ferrer IV, requesting for the waiver of personal appearance of Colonel Emerson de los Santos as he is currently under quarantine. Nonetheless, Colonel de los Santos is appearing in today's hearing virtually. There is no opposition filed against any of the ad interim appointments and one nomination. That is all, Mr. Chairman, your honors. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Mr. Chairman, I move the letter request of, for the waiver of personal appearance of Colonel Emerson de los be approved. Is there any objection? The chair hears none. The same is hereby approved. Where is Colonel de los Santos? He's uh, present virtually. I don't see him. Okay. Colonel de los Santos, are you there? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. okay. Uh, Mr. Mr. Secretary, please administer the oath to the appointee and nominee. Kindly, Colonel de los Santos. Kindly, please, please stand up. Kindly, all raise your right hand. Do you all swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in this proceeding? So help you, God. Mr. Chairman, they are now all under oath. Thank you. Thank you. May we now call on Lieutenant General Gilbert Gapay, nominated to the rank of General, and the most senior among the appointees. Please take your seat in front. You may give your opening statement if you have any. So, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, and uh, to the honorable members of the Commission on Appointments, uh, on behalf of uh, the 30 general and uh, senior officers uh, of the Armed Forces of the Philippines, we submit ourselves to the process of uh, confirmation by uh, the Commission on Appointments. We, as members of the Armed Forces, having been appointed by the President, have to be acknowledged and confirmed by the people. The honorable members of the Commission on Appointments are the representative of the people. Hence, Hence, this process further manifests civilian authority over the military. military. Thus, it is our constitutional duty to be subjected, subjected to this process, Your Honor. Thank you, Thank you General Gapay. The Chair acknowledges the virtual presence of Senator Joel Villanueva. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And also, Senator Risa Ontiveros. Good morning, Good morning ma'am. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Good morning, ma'am. Okay. The floor is now open for inquiries. There's, there's any? Mr. Chair, I'm also here. I mean, you're already counted ah, okay. because you were on time, unlike the, the other two. Oh, dear. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chair. <laughs> <laughs> okay, who wants to be recognized first? The nominee and the appointees are now ready for any questions. Mr. Chairman, yes, if I yes, may. Mr. Drillon is recognized. <coughs> Good evening, uh, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. Yes, on uh, General Gapai, I think there are, there are only two issues that I would want to raise, and I need uh, uh, confirmation on the record of his views. The first is on the issue of the uh, of, 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 of the uh, proposed IRR of the anti-terrorism law. Uh, the nominee, if I recall correctly, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, sir, was quoted as saying that uh, he would like to see uh, in the implementing rules and regulation a regulation of the use of social media. 
uh, and um, and this has raised uh, serious concerns. Even uh, Senator Lakson, our chair of this committee, has expressed some reservations on this uh, view of uh, the nominee. May we may we have for the record the complete statement of or the statement of uh, the nominee on this matter? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yes, Jan yes. Gapai would like to respond. Yes, uh, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, Your Honor. Thank you very much for this opportunity to clarify, clarify and uh, qualify. I think and during my assumption as the Chief Staff of the Armed Forces of the Philippines last uh, 3 August of this year. Uh, Your Honor, Mr. Chairman, uh, the AAP is absolutely no intention to curtail the people's freedom of expression through social media when uh, I gave that statement about the possibility and the need to regulate social media to combat terrorism. We remain steadfast in upholding our mandate to protect the flag, the people, and the Constitution. And that includes protecting the people's fundamental rights as guaranteed by our Constitution. However, in line with this is also the AP's mandate to protect the people's lives, property, and secure in general from lawless violence and acts of terrorism as well as to protect the sovereignty of our country from external and internal threats. The current reality worldwide, especially in our very own territory, our country, manifests the actual and imminent threat of terrorism. The recent twin bombings in Hulu that have claimed numerous innocent lives and have seriously injured multiples of our innocent citizens is a testament to this. AP intelligence and based on our experience have discerned that the group behind this violence uses social media to promote terrorism, recruit new members, solicit and generate financial, logistical, and material support from domestic and foreign sources. Hence, it is in this context that the AP perceives the need for exploring mechanisms through uh, democratic consultations with all sectors concerned for the regulation of social media. Nonetheless, the AFP would like to stress that this regulation is not tantamount to the curtailment of the people's rights to freedom of speech and expression, as well as freedom of assembly as exercise on social media. Rather, the goal of this regulation will be to make social media platforms, the service providers, more liable for the contents they host. This includes their responsibility to enforce the traceability of content or purportedly to enable accountability. But we most respectfully submit, Your Honors, that the AFP is a mere implementer of existing laws and regulations, as we will faithfully adhere to the letter of the law and implement it within its legal myths and bounds. We humbly acknowledge that we cannot expand the application of the law beyond the parameters contemplated by the legislators. We can only make suggestions based on actual experiences of the armed forces and based on actual and imminent requirements. Pursuant to our mandate for the, for the protection of our, of our flag, our sovereignty, our, sovereignty, our, people, our people, our territory, our territory and, our, and our constitution. constitution. <coughs> Thank you very much, uh, General Gapai. I guess uh, uh, what I am highlighting is the fact that uh, none of the provisions of the Bill of Rights in our constitutions is being suspended because of the uh, anti-terror law. There is nothing that is not intention, uh, and there is nothing in the law which would allow this. And one of the basic tenets and uh, cornerstones of our democratic freedom and space is that there should be no prior restraint on the freedom of speech. In other words, uh, uh, yes, the, 
the uh, anti-terror law would penalize the use of social media for purposes uh, of, 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 of for criminal purposes. But we underscore the fact that it is post facto. In other words, uh, the, the government can uh, can make the uh, the uh, platform uh, the the uh, operators of social media responsible for what has been said, but not uh, restrain them from saying what they would like to say. Those are two different areas, and uh, we just want to be uh, placed on record, uh, Mr. General Gapai, that you have no intention of, uh, of pushing for prior restraint in what should be stated in the social media platforms. Just that simple uh, statement uh, for, for purposes of record. There is no uh, uh, th there is no uh, intention, and there should be no prior restraint on uh, of the use of the social media platforms. Would you confirm that, uh, Mr. General? Yes, uh, yes, uh, Mr. Mr. Chairman, uh, Your Honor. Yes, yes. Uh, we did. We did. There's no intention to really uh, impose prior restraint uh, when we when we proposed uh, regulating the social media. Because we we believe that uh, you know anybody can can really post anything on the social media, but we suggest uh, they they do it responsibly. Besides, uh, we have existing laws uh, governing uh, what what we upload and post in the social media. As long as we do not uh, uh, hurt anybody, or uh, as long as uh, what we post are in accordance with the law, like we already have the. Uh, cyber libel, cyber libel law, the Cyber Crime Prevention Act, and even the Data Privacy Act. So we can upload anything as long as uh, you know they are in accordance with these laws, and uh, we do not inconvenience or uh, hurt or attack anybody's uh, anybody for that matter, Your Honor. So uh, it is. We had no intention to to really uh, impose uh, prior restraint when we when we. Uh, Proposed, or, uh, or uh, when we were asked to suggest uh, some provisions in the IR regarding uh, regulation of social media, and uh, let me point out, uh, Mr. Chair, Your Honours, uh, that uh, we are referring to when we regulate we we regulate the social media platforms, the service providers, not the users. And uh, in fact, uh, we have been coordinating with uh, Facebook Philippines recently. Because they have heard uh, our proposition, and uh, we were informed that uh, these uh, social media platforms, service providers, have grouped themselves together, like Facebook, um, Twitter, YouTube, and even uh, Microsoft. They formed this uh, global internet forum to counter terrorism, and this uh, group now is coordinating with armed forces on how are we going to go about uh, this uh, regulating uh, the social media platforms to counter terrorism. So, uh, and uh, besides... Uh, Mr. General, I'm a little concerned about that repeated reference to regulating social media platforms. Uh, that the the these, uh, the uh, owners of the social of the media social media platforms can indeed limit access to their platforms because these are private uh, platforms. Uh, they, these are not uh, these these are these are uh, owned privately by uh, the stockholders of these various media platforms. But I am a little uh, so that. The situation is that they can uh, limit, uh, they, they themselves as, uh, as, uh, as uh, private uh, uh, owners of this uh, platform, regulate what comes out of their platform. But what I am just concerned is, uh, is there should be no, uh, no attempt on the part of, uh, of uh, government to impose a prior restraint. Hold this media outlets and the authors responsible for what they write 
and say. But uh, for the record, I, uh, I want to make it a record that uh, we should not anticipate what these media platforms will do. Uh, but uh, once they, they, they cross the line, we will hold them responsible. That is the essence of uh, the, the system on our freedom of expression. Uh, Mr. General, do you agree with that? Before, Before you respond, and with the permission of Senator Drillon, will you agree with the, at least the Chair and Senator Drillon that what should be punished as contemplated in the law, in the Anti-Terrorism Act of 2020, is the conduct and the actual act without reference to prior restraint? Is that your understanding? So, ang ipaparusahan lang natin yung actual act of yes. facilitating, recruiting, di ba? But not yung prior. We cannot regulate social media. But the actual act of committing uh, uh, violations of the uh, newly passed Anti-Terrorism Act of 2020, yun ang i-address, yun ang ipapanis as contemplated in the, in the law. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, can can the uh, uh, nominee confirm the statements and views of the chair of this committee and the views of uh, this representation insofar as the parameters of uh, regulating social media is concerned, as uh, the, the, uh, the, the nominee has repeatedly said? Those are the parameters uh, that uh, the chairman of this committee and this representation are referring to. Would the, would the nominee confirm that the statement and those uh, uh, parameters? Yes, uh, yes, Mr. Chair, Your Honor, I confirm that that uh, we do not intend to really curtail uh, freedom of expression as guaranteed uh, by our Constitution. And of course, we don't want to impose any uh, uh, or curtail that, uh, or impose uh, prior restraint to anybody. And uh, what we're suggesting are the acts themselves should be uh, regulated pertaining to uh, really in combating terrorism. For example, those provisions uh, enumerated in, in uh, Section 10 of the 2020 uh, Anti-Terror Act in uh, inciting, planning, recruiting, and even uh, securing uh, financial and logistical resources and support uh, to, uh, ter by terror groups from domestic and foreign uh, sources. So, and usually uh, they do that, uh, Your Honor, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, using the social media in the internet. And uh, these groups, these terror cells are operating uh, particularly in the dark web, in the internet. And uh, these are the things we really want to, to regulate and address because they really communicate with each other. The through the internet. internet. That's why uh, in close coordination with with, with uh, social media platforms, uh, perhaps uh, we could we could come up with mechanisms on how to address these these acts enumerated uh, uh, in Section 10 of the 2020 Anti-Terror Law uh, using the internet, Your Honor. And uh, in addition, uh, there are many countries or uh, uh, which, uh, which uh, have already implemented and established mechanisms uh, regarding this one to combat terrorism. Uh, in Europe, uh, we have France, uh, UK, and uh, of course the United States. And here in uh, ASEAN, we have Malaysia, Indonesia, and even Myanmar. Uh, they have already mechanisms on how to, and Singapore, to, to uh, really uh, regulate uh, the actions of the terror groups in the social media. And uh, it is in that light that uh, when we were asked and uh, we suggested that uh, if it is possible with proper consultations with the uh, concerned agencies and within uh, the provisions of the, of the law, if we could come up with mechanisms to really how to regulate so that uh, the terror groups uh, could not exploit the social media in promoting and advancing uh, terrorism. Your Honor, Mr. Yes. Chair. Just a final point. Let me remind the good nominee that these acts uh, soliciting, uh, uh, conspiring, are punishable under the anti-terror law. 
but it is uh, a, a remedy is to file charges against them for inciting to or or promoting or or or, or assisting, but not a prior state. But let us we are uh, those those views are now on the record, and uh, at the appropriate time we will be uh, recalling, if need be, these uh, statements, policy statements of the. Uh, of, of the good general, uh, in case this uh, comes up to the uh, in the public forum again. Just one other, one other issue uh, before I yield the floor, Mr. Chairman, with your permission. And this is the call for a revolutionary government, which was raised uh, what a couple of weeks ago by some group. Um, and uh, after that news came, um, you. The good general nominee was uh, uh, was uh, uh, quoted in the national media saying that uh, the uh, that uh, you dismissed the call for a revolutionary government as unconstitutional and politically motivated. Uh, let me quote you uh, in, in your terms, Mr. General. Quote: We find it unconstitutional. Period. In fact, we find it politically motivated, end of quote. Uh, this was what you mentioned in the CNN interview last week. Just for the record, you reconfirm these uh, statements that you made. Yes, uh, Your Honor, Mr. Chair, the uh, Armed Forces of the Philippines uh, do not support this movement and calling for uh, revolutionary government. And precisely because of the reason that uh, it is unconstitutional, and uh, yes, we find it uh, politically motivated and uh, it will cause more harm than good at this point in time in our, uh, in our country. And uh, we always subscribe and uh, are being guided, our actions are being guided by our sworn duty to uphold and protect our constitution and uh, serve our people. Your Honor, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, Mr. General. That's very reassuring, uh, and uh, and uh, certainly uh, it's it's good to hear that for the record. Uh, just one more question: um, You will not allow anyone in the armed forces of the Philippines to entertain views on this revolutionary government other than the opinion that you have state, just stated for the record that is unconstitutional and politically motivated, and you do not support it, and will not allow anyone in the armed forces to, to, to do so. Yes, uh, also uh, we are entitled individually, your, uh, Mr. Chairman, Your Honor, but uh, as Armed Forces of the Philippines, we will not allow uh, anybody to be part of this movement and uh, to actively participate in the furtherance of uh, the goals and uh, objectives of uh, of the group uh, pushing for uh, the establishment of uh, revolutionary government, Your Honor, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chair, with those reassurances, both in terms of uh, the uh, revolutionary government and the terms of uh, regulation of social media. I uh, I want to uh, to place on record that the nominee has my vote and my support in his confirmation process. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair, and thank you to our, uh, to, to our nominee, General Gapay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Before I recognize the next interpolator, just a bit of information, General Gapay. The Senator DeLon contributed at least 80% of the final version of the anti-terrorism law. That's why he knows the provisions uh, by heart. So just a bit of information. Any other questions from other members? Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman. Kindly recognize yourself. I cannot see you. Ah, yes, I, Madam. Go ahead. Uh, yes. Go ahead. Um, Mr. General Gapay, um, we have seen a succession of tactics employed by China in its art of war in the West Philippine Sea and the other disputed areas. They started with cabbage strategy or the salami slicing strategy, wherein a contested area is surrounded by multiple security layers to deny access 
to the rival nations in that particular area of the plane by China. That's a high-ranking uh, U.S. Um, official said that China is endangering the security of Asia. Now we see a new strategy. China is now employing the, the gray zone tactics, which refers to the use of any and all means which falls short of traditional or conventional warfare. Example of this is ramming of um, vessels, uh, false information, and cyber tactics, because it, is, it has been alleged that uh, they have perfected the hacking of security facilities and installations. Political scientists and international law experts believe that countries, including the U.S., have not found a counter strategy to these gray zone warfare tactics because our international laws and customs have not recognized this. How can the Philippine military respond to these gray zone tactics of China that fall below the belt of conventional warfare? Yes, uh, Mr. Chair, Your Honor. Uh, in dealing with the uh, issues in the West Philippine Sea, we're guided, of course, by uh, our national policy and strategy of uh, of dealing with the issues uh, and setting these issues through peaceful means, and uh, of course, uh, adhering to the rules-based order uh, in the area. That's why uh, lately, uh, Mr. Chair, Your Honor, uh, we've been pushing for uh, the Code of Conduct in the West Philippine Sea, uh, not only uh, among the claimant countries, but uh, all other countries in the region to adopt. Now, regarding uh, the Gray Zone tactics of uh, China, yes, uh, Mr. Chair, Your Honor, uh, they've been doing this. Uh, what they're saying is different from what they're doing in the area. In the... And right now, uh, we are testing this uh, through diplomatic means, still uh, calling for a peaceful and uh, rules-based order uh, in dealing with the, with the problems in the South, in the West Philippine Sea. And uh, right now, uh, we're, uh, we're working closely with our uh, ASEAN counterparts uh, through a multilateral action. Uh, protesting this uh, aggressiveness of China in the area, uh, Mr. Chair, Your Honor. And uh, we also subscribe and uh, adhere to our national policy of uh, the implementation of our, for our independent foreign policy, wherein the Philippines uh, should be uh, a friend to all and uh, enemy to none. So uh, we we have been following this diplomatic track, but of course uh, we are backing this up uh, by maintaining uh, naval presence, military presence in the area, particularly in our uh, territorial waters. And uh, we have been uh, constantly monitoring uh, developments and uh, you know actions by all countries in the area. We have uh, forces uh, deployed there. And uh, they are patrolling uh, our territorial waters uh, frequently, regularly, uh, Mr. Chair, Your Honor. Uh, okay. Um, you just stated that all your actions are based on the policy of government with respect to China. Uh, can you um, categorically state the policy of our government with respect to China? And our uh, rights on the West Philippine Sea. Yes, Mr. Chair, uh, Your Honor. Uh, we we always uh, support our uh, independent foreign policy. Wherein uh, we are friends to all, uh, Mr. Chair, Your Honor. While uh, our ties with China are warming up, it doesn't mean we are abandoning our ties with the United States and other uh, traditional allies. So we are maintaining uh, all these ties uh, with our uh, with allied countries, and uh, 
very important that as a, on the part of the military we are uh, backing up this policy as an instrument of uh, our national policy through uh, maintaining naval presence uh, your honor in the area and uh, on a day to day basis uh, we are monitoring uh, what's happening in the area and uh, our new ships were deployed in the area to really patrol our territorial waters and uh, part of our exclusive economic zone. Mr. Chair Young. So in short, so in short Mr. General, that, uh, that our position is that our rights over the West Philippine Sea is not negotiable. Yes, uh, Mr. Chair, Your Honor, uh, while uh, we are uh, strictly adhering to diplomatic, peaceful, and rules-based uh, uh, approach in dealing with the issues in South China Sea. And uh, this soft uh, approach doesn't mean we're abandoning our claim in that area. We still uh, uphold them, and uh, in fact, our mere presence, military presence in the area, is a testimony that uh, we are upholding sovereignty and we're asserting uh, ownership of that uh, sovereignty in that territory. Mr. Chair, Your Honor. That is nice to hear. Uh, now we move on to the visiting forces agreement. Um, on February 11, 2020, the Philippine government officially notified the U.S. government that uh, it would be terminating the visiting forces agreement. And the uh, termination would take effect on August 9th. However, on June 2nd, the Philippine government decided on suspending its termination because of the COVID pandemic. On August 4, 2020, President uh, Duterte prohibited the Philippine military or prohibited the Philippine military from doing naval exercises in the international waters uh, because the Philippines, understandably, did not want to take sides between China and the United States amid rising tensions in the region. Can you enlighten this representation as to the status of the visiting forces agreement? Is it still active and or reinstated because... It has been put on hold. And what activities have you, um, if any, uh, have you taken um, with respect to this uh, visiting forces agreement as, uh, after it has been reinstated? Before uh, the nominee response, the chair acknowledges the physical presence of Senator Coco Pimentel. Go ahead, the general government. The, the nominee's classmate, uh, Your Honor. Ah, your classmate. Okay. So you're here for moral support, Your Honor. And it's good timing that uh, foreign uh, affairs matter is being asked. Uh, by our high your Honor. Yes, please respond, uh, General Gapat. Yes, uh, Chair, Your Honor. Um, on the status of the Visiting Forces Agreement, uh, it is still in effect because uh, the termination supposed to be uh, in August uh, 9 of this year was uh, suspended. So uh, its effectivity uh, was extended by, by six months and extendable for another six months, depending on uh, negotiations later on. Uh, so right now, uh, the VFA will be in effect until uh, February of next year and subject to further negotiations for another extension of six months. So, Mr. Chair, Your Honor, uh, on the part of the military, uh, this is a welcome development for us because uh, training continues uh, on a limited scale, unlike before. Uh, we continue to send uh, our, our uh, personnel uh, to the United States to train with them. And uh, another thing is... Uh, the support, the maintenance support uh, we have been receiving from the United States uh, through the foreign military funding, uh, the grants uh, still uh, continues because uh, right now, uh, while we are modernizing, still the bulk of our equipment are still U.S. made and uh, we are really dependent on the United States on the maintenance, maintenance of this and uh, roughly $50 million a year 
we've been receiving for the maintenance of our aircraft, our uh, naval vessels, and to include uh, some ground equipment like tanks. Uh, you know, it helped us very much in uh, maintaining this equipment while awaiting our modern equipment from the modernization program pipeline. So uh, this is a uh, welcome development, uh, Mr. Chair, Your Honor, the extension of, uh, of the VFA. But of course, we are anticipating for the permanent termination of this. That's why uh, on one side, that is also uh, a good development because uh, we will now be uh, uh, independent. We, believe that the we could stand on our own uh, without depending uh, very much on uh, the United States as uh, it has been so. in the past, uh, Mr. Chair, Your Honor. To forego revenues from uh, Mr. General, um, yeah, we, we put on hold the termination of the BFA because of the COVID pandemic. For the next five years, uh, everybody wants the end of pandemic. So let us fast forward po tayo the swift in a post-COVID world. Will boost uh, do you think uh, we should uh, continue our alliance uh, with the United States? And in what ways can uh, the U.S.-Philippine security relationship be strengthened? Well, uh, Mr. Chair, Your Honor, uh, I think uh, we are, uh, as member of the Family of Nations, uh, uh, it's very good to, to maintain uh, such an alliance. And uh, it, it was founded by... Uh, from the from uh, the wartime era, and uh, really, it was anchored on uh, our relationship with the United States. Is anchored uh, on uh, on our uh, rich history uh, in batting several wars alongside with our uh, United States allies, and uh, not only the United States uh, alliance building is a very good option uh, in addressing. Uh, common security challenges uh, in the region and in the world. That's why uh, we are maintaining uh, these alliances, not only with the United States, but uh, with other uh, uh, friendly, friendly countries, Your Mr. Chairman, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. General, uh, maintaining alliances is one thing, but uh, my question is, uh, can we, uh, in what ways can the Philippines and the U.S. Uh, security relationship be strengthened? Well, uh, even without VFA, we could still continue uh, some trainings with them. And, uh, of course, uh, logistical support uh, may also be uh, uh, continued. In fact, uh, Mr. Chair, Your Honor, some of our modern equipment are uh, being sourced from the United States, being a technologically advanced uh, country, particularly in uh, in military hardware. And uh, we could strengthen this uh, not only on the on the military aspect, but uh, also on uh, in trade and uh, economic aspects, because uh, you know the United States is still uh, among the top trading partners of our country. That's why. Maintaining alliance would be yes, would be would be very beneficial uh, for our country, uh, Mr. Chair, Your Honor. Um, the, the, the DFA Secretary uh, Chidoro Loxin Jr. stated in one of his interviews that uh, the Philippines can always invoke its uh, 69-year-old uh, defense treaty with the United States if China attacks a Philippine naval vessel in the West Philippine Sea. Um, do you agree that we can always uh, um, invoke this, uh, that the provisions of the mutual defense treaty? And through a joint government and private sector undertaking, it encourages the private sector government the treaty is binding for both countries the united states and the philippines in case we are attacked they are obliged to to uh, defend us and fight with us and in like manner when they attack it is also our obligation to help them so uh, so uh, that's why it's uh, it's a mutual defense treaty your honor mr chair and uh, yes it is binding for for both countries uh, with respect to this, last August 26, um, the United States announced sanctions and restrictions on 2,000 Chinese companies and uh, associated officials 
Are taking part in the building artificial islands in disputed waters. Uh, two days later, on August 28, uh, Foreign Secretary Teddy Boy Loxin said that he would strongly recommend to the president the termination of local contracts with Chinese firms blacklisted by the United States for island building in our. Um, territorial waters. Um, will you join the uh, uh, Secretary of Foreign Affairs in recommending uh, the uh, uh, termination of local contracts of these uh, blacklisted Chinese companies? Uh, Mr. Chair, Your Honor, um, designating or choosing who will uh, uh, construction companies for bid 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 projects is uh, beyond uh, our purview mr honor and uh, your honor and uh, i think uh, concert agencies like uh, dpwh dotr are uh, the agencies uh, which are in the best position to answer this but uh, of course all of these are governed by uh, the Government uh, Procurement Act, the uh, Republic Act 9184, and uh, I believe the, the awarding of such project to these contractors uh, have passed to this uh, to this process, and are were subjected to the provisions of uh, RA 9184, uh, Mr. Chair, Your Honor. Uh, but this is just a recommendation, Mr. General, whether that they should be blacklisted because they also, this, uh, this issue has also repercussions on our uh, security uh, concerns of the nation. So it is just uh, an, a question whether uh, you would join or are you amenable in the uh, recommendation of the Secretary of Foreign Affairs for blacklisting this company. Well, um, well, if you cannot answer that, then I'll go to the next question. Um, in the last uh, Commission on Appointment hearing, General Parlade stated that one of the two most important choke points in the national security is the Mindoro Strait. Um, on, uh, on June 28, uh, FB Liberty 5 capsized after the alleged collision with MV Vienna Wood, a Chinese uh, vessel, in the ter territorial waters of Occidental Mindoro. Um, it being, the Midoro Strait, it being a, uh, a one of the more important choke points in the national security. Um, would the AFP have uh, um, plans to, to beef up or uh, secure uh, the, 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 this territorial water? Because yes, uh, in Lubang so Island, it has existing uh, radar station, but it has ceased operations. And uh, we heard that uh, the Japanese government has um, has donated radar uh, equipment to the Philippine Coast Guard. And I would like to know um, uh, the um, priority areas where radar stations will be placed. Uh, taking into consideration the security concerns of our nation. Yes, Mr. Chair, Your Honor, uh, we have been uh, also securing that part of our country, particularly that Mindoro Strait. And uh, in fact, we have a littoral monitoring station there. where It's a, it's a facility uh, which monitors all uh, vessels flying that uh, route in that area. So every time uh, there are vessels there, we challenge them. Uh, we get some information, uh, their, uh, their country of registry, and the like, uh, Mr. Chair, Your Honor. And uh, right now, uh, that area uh, is not frequently being patrolled by our naval assets because uh, most of our naval assets are concentrated in the West Philippine Sea. But uh, so uh, it's not that uh, on a, not on a regular basis, but it's part of the route being patrolled by our uh, by our Philippine Navy, and uh, admittedly uh, due to lack of naval assets, we really uh, cannot uh, patrol and secure effectively our very long coastline, which is number three in the whole world, uh, with more than 36,000 kilometers, Your Honor. So, uh, but uh, within the limits of our capabilities, 
we are monitoring that uh, area, Mr. Chair, Your Honor, the Mindoro Strait. Now, this slide illustrates the... Uh, my last question, Mr. Chairman. Recently, there have been increased terrorist activities in the country. Uh, do you support the recent calls to declare martial law in Sulu? Well, uh, it remains to be an option, Mr. Chair, Your Honor. But right now, uh, what we need are uh, the readily implementable uh, uh, measures to address and curb uh, terrorism. And uh, Presidential Proclamation 55 is still in effect, uh, declaring uh, Mindanao uh, lawless violence in the island of Mindanao and calling on the PNP, uh, the EFP, to suppress this uh, lawless violence, particularly the threat of uh, terrorism. Uh, Mr. Chair, Your Honor, and we support that. Right now, uh, we're crafting a, uh, a revised memorandum order to implement uh, Presidential Proclamation 55, and this time uh, it will be uh, geared towards a more comprehensive and holistic uh, approach in, in dealing with terrorism, not only in Mindanao, but uh, in the entire country. So... Uh, we, we are integrating in the proposed memorandum order, which we will submit uh, to the president, uh, the roles and support that will be provided by uh, the LGUs, uh, other government agencies, and other sectors of society, uh, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much, Mr. General Gapai. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chair. Chair. Congressman, uh, Congresswoman Sato, with the indulgence of uh, Senator Ramon Bong Revilla Jr. and Senator Marcos, we give premium to those who are physically present. So I'll recognize first Senator Coco Pimentel. Sorry. Thank you. Mr. Chair, if you could also add me to your list, Mr. Chair. Yes, uh, noted. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Representation, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. With apologies to my uh, colleagues, uh, I came here because uh, the nominee is uh, or was my batchmate in the Ateneo, and uh, it is Senator Grace Post's uh, birthday tomorrow. <laughs> and there will be and there will be uh, something later on. <laughs> so first of all, I'd like to congratulate the, uh, the General Gapai for his uh, nomination to the rank of a general and uh, that will make him the uh, chief of staff of the armed forces of the Philippines. Uh, General G Gapai, I, I always uh, encounter this term uh, minimum credible defense uh, to the extent that you can publicly discuss this. The, uh, anyway, the concept. Uh, do we, are, are we adopting that concept here in the Philippines? Uh, does the AFP also adopt that concept? And what is that concept? Uh, uh, Mr. Chair, Your Honor, uh, our uh, national defense strategy is anchored on, on uh, the basic policy in, enshrined in our constitution. Renounce war. That's why all our capabilities are, uh, are geared towards uh, the defense of our territory in our country. So uh, as far as capability development is concerned, uh, we are... We are, uh, our objective is to achieve a capability that would establish military presence all over our territory. Because uh, after military presence is military control, which is bordering already on uh, uh, an offensive capability, actually, towards uh, external aggressors. So what our capability upgrade would be geared towards protecting our territory more on a defensive posture. So uh, that's why uh, with that, uh, the principle of deterrence would be there so that uh, we should have a credible uh, defense posture with, uh, with credible set of equipment, military hardware, to really protect uh, our territorial waters. Uh, more on the defensive uh, posture, uh, Mr. Chair, Your Honor. Thank you, General. So, so the concept is clear uh, between and among the military hierarchy, no? so claro. But as you mentioned, uh, 
the concept has uh, hardware components. Do these details change uh, from time to time depending on who the leader is of the armed forces or is this also fixed in a long-term plan where uh, uh, if it's already written and agreed upon this year, the commanders or commanding generals five years later on cannot uh, change the plan which was uh, which was uh, fixed five day, five years earlier. Yes, Mr. Chair, Your Honor, uh, we have this long-range uh, defense plan, and uh, which covers uh, ten years or more. And uh, we have this medium-range uh, defense plan, which covers a five-year period, which is being uh, reviewed by midstream after two to three years. And of course, we have our defense plan on current operations, which is uh, where our armed forces is very much preoccupied right now. So uh, there's a committee, there's a board uh, uh, who reviews this. All the major services, the Army, Air Force, Navy, to include our combatant commanders, the unified commanders. Uh, these are the operational commanders in the different areas of our country. Northern Luzon, we have a military commander there. Southern Luzon in uh, Visayas. And uh, we have two command military commanders in Mindanao. So all of this get down together and review uh, period on a regular basis. Uh, this uh, capability development plan based on uh, current and emerging security environment, Mr. Chair, Your Honor. That's why uh, uh, it's very hard for, for a new commander to really just uh, change it. So it's go, it goes through a process, Mr. Chair, Your Honor. Uh, but from this one, from experience, uh, has it often been? Has the, have the details been often changed? The details of the uh, of the plan. Actually, the details uh, basically remains the same. I uh, Mr. Chair, Your Honor. But uh, sometimes priorities priorities change. For example, uh, uh, right now we are prioritizing uh, air defense because of the emerging threat of uh, missiles, uh, which are being developed by, uh, you know, in, in the neighboring countries, and uh, it is uh, an, uh, a threat we have to contend with uh, in the near future. That's why we have to develop this capability as against developing uh, uh, other capabilities, uh, Mr. Chair, Your Honor. So uh, it would depend on the current and emerging security environment. And we also do this uh, periodically, uh, the strategic uh, environmental assessment, threat assessment, and uh, all other actions uh, to include a force restructuring, a force structure of the armed forces, our capability development, and maybe new doctrines as well because of uh, you know, the evolving uh, modern warfare and technology. So the armed forces should adapt uh, uh, with all these uh, developments, that's why, uh, and uh, they are all uh, integrated uh, in those uh, revised uh, defense plans, uh, Mr. Chair, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Uh, Mr. General, the, the foreign policy of the Philippines is we call uh, what we call the independent uh, foreign policy, but as I understand it, it is that the Philippines should be a friend to all nations. So, in the, is the armed forces also exerting effort to be a friend of uh, of other armed forces of other nations, or are we are we still limiting ourselves to our usual traditional long-term allies, the so-called Western civilization? Yes, Mr. Chair, Your Honor. Uh... In fact, uh, we have been maintaining, we are maintaining uh, several uh, bilateral and uh, multilateral agreements with other armed forces, uh, not only in the West, uh, right now, uh, more so in our, uh, in our ASEAN neighbors, with our ASEAN neighbors. And right now, uh, we, we are establishing uh, some uh, defense cooperation agreements with in the East, like Russia. We're opening up... Uh, this uh, uh, military ties with them, 
and it's very good because uh, we we get exposed to new technology, doctrines, and uh, particularly now that we're modernizing, we're also being uh, exposed to how to fight in a modern uh, battlefield, uh, Your Honor. Mr. Chair. At least ibang point of view, no? Kasi baka ibang, ibang strategy din yun, you know? Well, anyway, uh, doon lang siguro po sa ating mga kagamitan, nasabi nyo nga kanina, we are using mostly American-made uh, hardware, so I've also encountered this concept of uh, interoperability, diba? That's a problem if we if we get from another country, but th that should not, we should not make it an insurmountable uh, obstacle or reason for us not to entertain equipment or, or hardware coming from other countries uh, aside from the United States. But I don't know how you will solve the problem of uh, interoperability, Mr. General. Yes, uh, Mr. Chair, Your Honor. Um, actually, uh, well, what equipment, the equipment we buy are anchored on our doctrines and how we fight. It's uh, not dependent on the doctrines of other countries or other uh, military organizations. It's, it's ours based on the doctrines of the Armed Forces of the Philippines. So that is, uh, those doctrines are really uh, the principles on how we will fight, how we will defend our country. So uh, based on that doctrine, we now uh, come up with Okay, if this is the, the way how we fight, so how are we going to be organized? The force structure of the armed forces. What, based on that uh, doctrine of how we fight, so what equipment do we need? So it, it is based on our own. And uh, interoperability with other military organizations are, uh, are achieved through uh, bilateral or multilateral exercises, which are covered... Uh, and are uh, embodied in our uh, defense cooperation agreements with other armed forces. So, um, uh, so far, uh, Mr. Chair, Your Honor, um, uh, interoperability uh, is being enhanced uh, regularly through the conduct of uh, these uh, joint exercises with our uh, allied armed forces. Uh, but unfortunately, during covid uh, we just uh, these non-kinetic uh, exercises were were put on hold, and but we still continue to train uh, through uh, virtual and online channels. Mr. Chair, Your Honor, Thank you, General, for answering my questions, and <clears throat> let me congratulate you uh, on your nomination and also for your uh, successful career. You've been a good father of your organization. Uh, also, invest in your people, invest in our uh, uh, military. Uh, personnel, our people, and uh, I, I heard that you organized this Army Mental Health Center. So I think this has been, this, this is, uh, uh, has been the uh, need uh, for a long time. So congratulations for finally uh, putting it up. So be, continue to be a good father of the organization uh, for the rest of your career, uh, General. Congratulations. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank, Thank you, you Senator Chair. Pimentel. Uh, Senator Bong Revilla is recognized, and after him, Senator Amy Marcos, then Senator Risa Ontiveros, Senator Joel Villanueva, in that order. Yes, Senator Villa is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, General Gapay, just one question po. As the Chief of Staff of the AFP, I'm sure you are aware of the 2019 COA audit report on your organization. In the said report, COA has called out the uh, AFP over inefficiencies in the implementation of AFP modernization program, specifically on projects which should have been completed last 2018 and 2019. These so-called inefficiencies would, be, would uh, include non-implementation of 28 projects costing 5.72 billion, suspended 15 project, projects costing 3.9 billion, terminated contract costing 246 million. May I know from the distinguished appointee, what are his plans in addressing these efficiencies? Thank you very much, Mr. Chair, Your Honor. Actually, uh, the defense acquisition system is also uh, being governed by Republic Act 9184. 
So still, uh, we follow the the most common uh, procurement process, and uh, we follow the bidding process, Mr. Chair, Your Honor. And uh, sometimes we we also uh, experience failure of bidding. That's why uh, this causes so much delay, because uh, per experience uh, from the approval by the Defense Department to delivery of actual equipment, it would take. About two years, Mr. Chair, Your Honor, following the 9184 process. That's why uh, we, we have uh, filed uh, in Congress uh, a National Defense Procurement Act so that uh, this uh, modernization projects or acquisition of modern equipment would follow uh, a different uh, process. And uh, because uh, also to to maintain, uh, because these are uh, secrets of the trade, uh, Mr. Chair, Your Honor. And pag pinablish natin ito sa PILJEPS, burn out na kagad yung mga secret weapon natin, our defense capability. That's why we would want a separate Defense Procurement Act so that uh, it would be faster than 9184, more efficient, uh, so that in the process we would not lose we will not lose uh, so much uh, money and resources uh, due to failure of biddings and other uh, uh, problems in the procurement pipeline. But nonetheless, uh, this, we are addressing uh, these delays, uh, Mr. Chair, Your Honor. Uh, we are fast-tracking again. They're again uh, on track in the bidding process. Uh, others, uh, they are, uh, most of the projects are in the different stages of the bidding process uh, and uh, some are ready uh, for awarding, some are uh, for opening of bids and uh, of course Mr. Chair, Your Honor, uh, COVID also uh, has a, an adverse impact on our procurement system, particularly in uh, pre-delivery inspection, post-qualification, wherein we conduct further uh, investigation or uh, qualifications of the contractors, uh, Mr. Chair, Your Honor. So, uh, all of these put together really uh, causes delay in uh, the delivery of the much needed capabilities we need in the armed forces. So, uh, that's why, Mr. Chair, Your Honor, uh, we, we have uh, proposed uh, separate uh, Defense Procurement Act for the Defense Department, Mr. Chair. Okay, thank you, uh, General Gapay, and uh, congratulations. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Senator Villa. Senator Amy Marcos is recognized. Uh, Mr. Chair, I have uh, no questions for General Gapay, but for Faustino Rosario and Cabanlet. Thank you. You are uh, temporarily excused, General Gapay. General, uh, those uh, whose names were mentioned kindly Occupy the front seat. You can ask, are you asking them one after the other or simultaneously, Senator Marcos? One after the other, Paul, as, okay. uh, yeah. as the meeting goes on, if it's all right with the chairman. It's okay. Thank you. Please proceed. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. I'd like to uh, ask General uh, Jose Faustino Jr. in his assumption as uh, Ismincom uh, commander um, said that uh, it has become much less complicated as a conflict because uh, we are no longer alone. The stakeholders are with us. Um, I would like to um, ask, given your recognition that the insurgency war is asymmetric as well as un unconventional, um, in the fight for the hearts and minds of the people of Eastern Mindanao, uh, what is the plan to defeat the communist insurgency? What are your ideas about good governance? And in general, we are aware that what we do not conceive of as soldiery are in fact part and parcel of the anti-insurgency effort. The uh, need for doctors, medical professionals in civil military operations, the need for engineers and equipment in constructing roads in far-flung and dangerous areas. Perhaps uh, you can tell us a little more about the concrete steps necessary for Ismincom. 
Thank you. Uh, yes, Your Honor, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, I am Lieutenant General Sesi Faustino Jr., the commander of the Eastern Mindanao Command. And uh, during my assumption, I said uh, that uh, in, the, in that part of the country, Eastern Mindanao, we are already uh, at high speed in defeating the communist terrorists. Like I said, that uh, with the implementation of the, the LCAP or the uh, EO70, the, we, we've seen in our parts uh, there in Eastern Mindanao, the uh, collaboration between collaboration between the, the military, the local government, the local uh, uh, the, the uh, local agencies that uh, we have we were able to come up with uh, like a, a whole of nation approach where everybody is involved. Uh, what we notice in those areas and probably the same in the other areas in, 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 in the country is the the realization that insurgency is not or a part of it is only a small part of it is a military problem so with the uh, participation of all uh, stakeholders we were we were able to to reduce the number of the the, the npas the reduce the 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 uh, influence of the, the npas in, uh, in the barangays we were able to clear the political military or uh, dismantle the political military organizations of the enemy because of the participation of all stakeholders. Uh, uh, two words, um, good governance uh, had a very big impact on, on uh, the way we solve our problems of insurgency in those areas. Your Honor, uh, take care. Yes, thank you very much, General. Um, I uh, I was part of the LGUs for a uh, long decade, so uh, I'm aware of that. But uh, what I would what I'm asking is whether um, increased medical presence and engineering uh, efforts are part of your game plan on the part of the Army, the Corps of Engineers, for example, the uh, old WAC nurses, for example. Kasi yun ang hinahanap ng tao eh. At uh, mukhang uh, sa Eastern Mindanao may crying need para dyan. Hindi naman natin pwedeng uh, gawing sangkalan lahat sa LGU at sa mga lokal, hindi naman nila kaya. Are you going to initiate any efforts for nursing and doctors as well as engineering brigades um, as part of the AFP's plan? Yes, ma'am. Uh, as far as Isimitcom is concerned, we have uh, we are already doing that, ma'am, particularly in... Uh, we have uh, engineer brigades and engineer battalions deployed all over the area. And uh, there are some, there are a lot of requests from our local government units, particularly in areas or far-flung areas where uh, there are problems with, the, with, the, with security. So the engineers, the army engineers, the Corps of Engineers are very much involved in these projects. The same with uh, with uh, those in the medical profession, I think at the level of the armed forces of the Philippines, uh, there is this effort already of uh, recruiting uh, medical practitioners, particularly now, or especially now that uh, there is a pandemic. Uh, yes. There is a program uh, of the armed forces of the Philippines to strengthen this uh, our medical profession. Ma yes, I would like you to know that at least uh, uh, this legislator would be a uh, very supportive, as I have a personal, uh, I have a personal background in uh, assisting with the Corps of Engineers as well as the Navy, the CBs who uh, who actually concreted a great number of uh, the um, the uh, roads and bridges in uh, many areas in Eastern Mindanao as well as in Samar. So uh, I think that will be a great help. I'd like to call on General Del Rosario. Thank you very much, General Faustino. I'm counting on you. Thank you, ma'am. General Rosario, uh, Mr. Chair. Del Rosario, please uh, occupy the front seat. Please proceed, uh, Senator Marcos. Thank you very much, uh, General Del Rosario. The areas of responsibility of the 7th Infantry Division 
are central Luzon and northern Luzon. I have a very simple and uh, local concern, and that is when are we finally going to be insurgency-free in your area of responsibility? What's the plan, Paul? Uh, uh, Mr. Thierry, your honors, uh, good morning, sir. I am the uh, I am Major General Alfredo Virosari Jr., uh, Philippine Army, the commander of 7th Infantry Division. Uh, Ma'am, let me just uh, uh, correct the AOR of 7 ID, which uh, you mentioned earlier. The exact uh, area of responsibility, Ma'am, of 7th uh, Infantry Division is uh, are the areas of Region 3, Region 1, and the province of Abra. Yes, I oh. think I mentioned the uh, Central Luzon, which is uh, Region 3, Northern Luzon, which is Region 1, plus Abra, like you mentioned. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. With regards yes, to I the... You know how we are finally going to achieve insurgency-free status. It's uh, been going on for decades. We were actually insurgency-free, and now... Uh, Every other year, it seems, there's a new attempt to achieve that. Uh, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Uh, the term insurgency... What's the plan for you para matapos na po? Kasi ang tagal-tagal na nito, dati naman, nung dekada 70, 80, matahimik dyan. Uh, tapos, uh, naging lalong magulo. Pagkatapos, uh, taon-taon, naririnig namin, may bagong plano. Para sa amin, yung 7th Infantry, pero hanggang ngayon, di naman matapos-tapos, hindi naman ma-clean up yung tinatawag na uh, Regions 1, 3, plus Abra. Anong plano natin? Uh, the actual plan, ma'am, of uh, the 7th Infantry Division is to at least clear uh, before the end of the year two KLG of the NPA. Uh, right now, these two KLGs are located in uh, Ilocosur and Abra, the, the first one. We call them the KLG South Ilocosur. And the other one is the KLG Sierra, Mad Sierra Madre, located in uh, boundaries of Aurora and uh, Nueva Ecija. With regards to the insurgency-free issue, ma'am, uh, the Philippine Army, which covers uh, a very large area, ma'am, specifically the 7 RD, our deployment is actually based on the insurgency situation. Kapag nakita nyo ma'am na kukunti yung sundalo sa inyong area, specifically Ilocos Norte, which I believe uh, less than a company na ma'am, meaning less than 100 na yung Philippine Army dyan, Tama. yung, yung uh, level ma'am ng, uh, ng security situation sa inyo ay medyo mataas na compared sa ibang region or ibang province like uh, Ilocos Sur, which we are now... Uh, uh, on the verge of clearing, and then... Uh, Pero after... general, hindi siya on the verge of clearing. Kasi, ang dalas namin naririnig, August 15, nagka-encounter. August 14, may aresto. August 8, eh, kung babasahin mo, parang lumalala yung sitwasyon, di naman umiigi. Uh, actually, ma'am, yung mga encounter na yan ay uh, result yan, ma'am, ng ating mga intelligence operations na ginagawa. We are being able to locate them and hit them. So, if you will see the records, ma'am, for the past during the past month since uh, last August, uh, sunod sunod mami encounter sa Ilocosur. That's the right. Last one, the last one was in uh, Santa Lucia, Ilocosur, where we were, we were able to neutralize at least five five NPA and recovered the uh, more than twenty two firearms. With That's that right. Um, mom, uh, we, we read the news, General. Um, I'm aware of that. Uh, I'm still in Ilocos as we speak. But uh, sometimes it uh, seems like uh, the AFP is working at cross purposes with the PNP, as well as the security advisors who uh, have spoken about um, um, the uh, continued NPA recruitment of the IPs. Pero kayo, encounter naman kayo ng encounter, sila naman, inaakit naman nila yung mga tribes natin. Para nakakalito, may plano ba? Uh, if we will look at the EO number 70, ma'am, uh, which basically focus on the whole of nation approach, meaning, uh, gaya na sabi ni Gerald Faustino kanina, all the agencies of the government are involved. And under that EO 70, we have created different clusters. Uh, okay. 
12 clusters to at least to to address the different issues within uh, which is a uh, evolving in uh, in uh, counterinsurgency operations for the military ma'am we are actually a, uh, the main actor in uh, in one cluster only which is the uh, in the uh, pledge cluster sorry uh, ano yun yung pledge ma'am yung uh, peace and law enforcement uh, Okay. Development. So, Tapos, is, a, is an acronym. So, isa lang kayo sa isang dosena is what you're saying. So, iba-ibang yes, iba approaches. Yes, ma'am. And then, uh, yung, yung National Task Force uh, LCAC, ma'am, uh, sa regional level, meron din tayo na-create na Regional Task Force LCAC. And then, down sa provincial, meron din tayo na-create hanggang sa municipal level. Uh, with that, ma'am, sa 7th Infantry Division AUR, masasabi natin na uh, nade-develop na yung uh, whole of nation approach na yan. Uh, just like isang example lang, ma'am, is during the encounter in uh, Santa Lucia, after na may mga report that uh, there were uh, people or residents who were evacuated from their area, we we don't have to ask anymore the mayors, the different uh, LGUs, LGEs to act to para i-assist sila, ma'am. Unlike before, pag may mga ganong evacuation, halos yung military palagi, ma'am, yung uh, nagtitake charge, meaning na hati yung aming focus, instead na habulin yung kalaban, i-neutralize sila, pati yung pag-secure, pag-assist sa mga civilians ay ginagawa pa namin. Pero, I think, I think, God, I think, uh, uh, General, hindi po ba kasi offshoot yan nung mga locally initiated uh, peace uh, talks? Kaya medyo activist na yun mga LGU at uh, tumutulong, hindi po ba? Yes, ma'am. Pero ang nag-trigger rin dyan, ma'am, ay itong creation nitong ano, National Task Force on uh, Ending Local Communist Armed Conflict, which is the EO number 70. O oh, sige, kasi medyo kinakabahan kami sa Ilocos sa uh, Norte. Eh. Parang lumalala yung sitwasyon imbis na gumanda. Kaya uh, gusto ko lang marinig sa inyo na talaga namang uh, may plano higit sa lahat na may balak maging uh, finally maging um, uh, insurgency free. Maraming salamat and uh, we support your appointment. Yeah, before uh, we excuse you, uh, yes, General uh, Rosario, I would just like to be clarified on your... Uh, Money accountability, 8.466 million. Yes, not to put you on the spot, huh? because joint accountability, and I more or less, I know the background. Yes, sir. But I would just like to be clarified, especially on the current status. Has this been cleared already? Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, that uh, clearance was made uh, during the time na may mga existing, sir. Uh, an obligation. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, clear, clear na ito? Yes, sir. Yes, thank you. Precious. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Ah, you're done? Opo, oh, nandiyan ba si, uh, si Colonel Cabanlet po? Kuli na lang. He's here. Yes, uh, Colonel Cabanlet. Yeah, before you proceed, I think I know you. <laughs> I yes, Your Honor. So, Mr. how's Chair. everything health-wise? You know who are referring to, no? Yes, sir. Is doing fine. She's uh, back to normal life. She is uh, actively performing as a frontliner now because she's in with also with the Philippine Navy Hospital, sir. Yeah, good to hear that. Yeah, Senator Marcos. Yes, thank you very much. Um, yes, um, Colonel Cabanlet, this isn't actually an uh, interpolation, but uh, more an, a request for information. I read about your initiative, uh, Football for Peace. Is uh, that correct for the Marines? And uh, tinuturuan ng Marines ng football, yung mga bata sa Sulu at Tawi-Tawi. Tama po ba yun yung nabasa namin? Mr. Chair, you are. I am Lieutenant I am Colonel Stephen L. Cabanlet. And I'm presently the Naval Adjutant of the Philippine Navy. And with your question, ma'am, Football for Peace started in 2011 when I was the Operations Officer of Marine Battalion Landing Team 3. 
It was actually an offshoot and implementation program of the IPSP Bayanihan. And since my master's is physical education, and I use what I learned in my sports management, psychology of sports, leadership, recreation, I was able to make a program because football was just an ordinary CMO of the Marines wherever we are, if that's our pastime. And when I became a, an operations officer, uh, it was my realization that the kids before, when I was a second lieutenant, na dinadaan na lang namin, ma'am, ay sila yung nagiging kalaban nung bumalik ako sa Sulu as operations officer. So, it's a mahaba yung pagtatanim, sabi ko, kung yung second lieutenant ako, tinaniman ko na sila ang maganda, hindi sana sila naging kalaban. So, what I did is applied what I learned in physical education. Just organized a football clinic in the area of operations in Sulu and I was able to engage the community. And with that, with that uh, simple program, uh, it was spread out all over Sulu and most of the kids ay naging ano, naging friendly na sa military. Kasi ang paningin ko noon, ma'am, ay uh, parang nasa isang bahay, napumunta ka sa isang bahay, tapos na, ikaw yung nag, uh, nag-dedictate, o dapat gawin nyo to, ito gawin nyo to, ito dapat tanggalin nyo. So what I did is, I go to the community, bring a ball, and let them enjoy kung ano yung nasa bola, ano yung mayroon sa bola. It was actually the power of the game, the cloud power of the ball and a play. So with that, it's the kid, it's the children who brings message to the community, to their parents, and especially to their parents na may mga barel, na ang mga sundalo na to ay hindi pala kalaban. Ang sundalo na to ay kaibigan. And that I started to engage the community because when we did a festival in the community, Ang nangyari po, it's a festivities. Nandoon yung magulang, nandoon yung mga kapatid, nandoon yung mga local officials, and that's the time we can deliver the message of peace doon po sa community. That's why the theme of Football for Peace ay community development. It's a countering violence extremism tool. It's a di sports diplomacy. And lastly, it's a cultural change. Culture from violence into culture of peace. Until now, we, are, we continue to the program. It's not only in the Marines, but the whole AFP. We have, we have started in Sulu. It spreads all over Mindanao to include all major service, major branches of service. And actually, we are being recognized by international groups uh, because of this program. Our purpose is not actually... Uh, Getting kids na dapat magaling silang football kasi hindi namin talent yung mom. But our purpose is to give them a peaceful life at to engage them and bring the necessary uh, basic needs na may bigay namin, particularly Thank education you. for the kids. That's all. Thank you. Thank you very much and congratulations, Colonel Cabanleta. It's come to our notice that, um, in fact, this program has spread wide and uh, deeply. And um, it's very infrequently that we see innovation, creativity, and new and inspiring ideas in the public sphere. But uh, this morning, you have uh, shared that with us. Thank you very much and congratulations on the Football for Peace. We support your uh, promotion. Thank you. That will be all, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Senator Marcos. Thank you, uh, Colonel Camalet. Thank you, sir. Senator Risa Ontiveros is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Amari uh, bubang tawagin ulit sa harapan si General Gapay. Yes, General Gapay. Salamat, Mr. Chair. Salamat, General. Uh, bilang miyembro nitong komisyon at bilang uh, mista ninyo sa PMAC nagdala class of 1986, 
I'm very proud and happy to have you here before our committee this morning, General. Uh, siguro dalawang paksalang. Uh, yung una, uh, in line with the incident involving four army officers who were shot dead by police officers in Holo, Sulu, you made a clear statement, General, that the incident was murder and uh, that you found the report of the police officers as fabricated, inconsistent, and misleading, whereas the PNP said that it was a misencounter. Uh, do you maintain your position that what happened uh, to the four army officers was murder, General? Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Mr. Chair, Your Honor. Um, uh, there's been an NBI who uh, investigated it thoroughly, also has the same findings, Mr. Chair, Your Honor. That's why, uh, yes, uh, I am uh, maintaining my, my statement on that. Thank you, General. And uh, could, could you provide the committee with an update or progress uh, on the investigation of this case? Yes, uh, during our uh, last hearing here with uh, Senator uh, De La Rosa as the chair, we were updated by the National Bureau of Investigation that uh, the report were, and recommendations uh, were already submitted to DOJ. And uh, I believe it's still with the prosecutor's office. And uh, we're just awaiting a uh, result of the preliminary investigation of uh, the prosecutor's office uh, for, uh, for the subsequent filing of charges. By the way, uh, we were briefed by NBI that their findings uh, resulted to uh, four counts of murder for the nine uh, policemen, uh, planting of evidence, and of course, uh, there's also this... Uh, uh, command responsibility for uh, remiss of duty, negligence of duty uh, for uh, the station commander up to the provincial director, uh, Mr. Chair, Your Honor. Thank you, General. Now, moving forward from uh, this terrible incident, um, what can the AFP and the PNP do to avoid this this kind of, some would call it seeming miscommunication, but what can both your institutions do to avoid this kind of terrible incident from ever recurring? Uh, Mr. Chair, Your Honor, uh, there are many coordinate, coordinative mechanisms uh, that we have instituted with the PNP, uh, particularly through the Joint Peace and Security uh, Coordinating Committee or what we call the JPSCC, wherein uh, we jointly plan, we jointly train, we conduct joint intelligence, joint operations, and even uh, joint civil-military operations. And of course, uh, in cases involving both agencies, we also come up with uh, joint uh, public information uh, operations. So, uh, Systems and uh, coordinative mechanisms are in place, but uh, still we, we are enhancing them, uh, Mr. Chair, Your Honor, particularly on uh, in the conduct of, uh, for this one, uh, intelligence of operations, uh, because usually we, we conduct that uh, covertly, and uh, mostly coordinations are unwritten. That's why uh, this is one area which uh, we will look into. Although, uh, generally, uh, coordinative mechanisms are in place, Mr. Chair, Your Honor. It's interesting, General, to hear na, siyempre, may parte din yung mga unwritten na coordination. So, na, bilang civilian din at bilang mambabatas, na-appreciate ko yung sigurong balanse na hinahanap ninyong dalawa, AFP at PNP. Balanse ng confidentiality, yung security, at the same time, yung, yung clarity at talagang uh, maximum uh, communication and coordination, at least between the two of you. Um, do you believe, General, that the police officers involved in this particular incident should be preventively suspended or should be relieved from their post uh, pending investigation? Uh, if it is possible, uh, Mr. Chair, Your Honor, uh, just like uh, what we're having, what we're uh, exercising in the armed forces. Once you uh, violate the regulations, uh, 
you get relieved of your post uh, right away and be uh, uh, put in custody if warranted. So uh, we were surprised that uh, those involved in the incident were just put on restrictive custody and they were not relieved of their positions. And they continue to exercise that authority uh, and uh, continue on performing their jobs despite the uh, investigation is already ongoing. So, uh, and uh, I think it is uh, of the best interest of everyone so that for the impartial investigation to proceed, those involved should be relieved and uh, so that they, they would not influence in whatever capacity the, you know, the investigation process. That's why uh, if there's a way, uh, maybe we're recommending that uh, a similar uh, policy should be adopted also in the in the in the PNP. I understand that that's uh, how you do it uh, also in the AFP general. At I share your surprise. Na o nga ngayon ni hindi pa preventively suspended yung sham na tao. And in fact, it is my understanding na meron na ang PNP na katulad na polisiya sa inyo na kapaloob na sa PNP reform and uh, uh, modernization law or reorganization law at mismo sa manual ng uh, PNP Internal Affairs Service. Kaya nananatili din yung expectation ko sana na ma-preventively suspend yung nine and in fact uh, kinailangan kong ulitin yung apila ko sa national headquarters ng PNP na in fact i-relieve yung buong uh, holo PNP command pending investigation. Uh, in any case, General, uh, to another uh, but related question, I preface ko sa uh, isang message na pinadala sa akin ng isang matagal ko ng kasama sa peace movement. Uh, nung nakaraang weekend lang, nag-message siya sa akin na, Hello Risa, uh, area of assignment ko ang Sulu. I have learned how still, up to this time, hirap na hirap ang AFP to win the hearts and minds of the local people. Mahaba ang karanasan nila of human rights violations ng militar since the 1970s at malaking factor ito kung bakit mababa o walang credibility sa kanila ang military. But, sabi niya, I'm aware that AFP is really trying its best. The Marines are doing better in terms of building relations with the locals. At baka, sa, baka kasama na rin dito yung uh, Football for Peace ni Colonel Cabanlet. Given, alam ko, isa lang itong feedback, it's anecdotal, pero bilang isang para sa akin illuminating na feedback, as AFP Chief of Staff General, what is your strategy in advancing the peace agenda in Sulu? And are you open to tapping civil society, religious groups, and other institutions in crafting a peace agenda. Yes, Mr. Chair, uh, Your Honor. Uh, this uh, problem in uh, Sulu is not a problem of the military or the security sector alone. And uh, for uh, many years, uh, we've been alienated, actually. But uh, right now, we come to a realization that you know there's more than... The, more than the armed component of the problem, uh, there, there are many factors that affect. Uh, for the past two years alone, we have, been, we have neutralized so many Abu Sayyaf group. Uh, in fact, many have surrendered. We have captured many firearms. We have recovered from a high of 54 to only three, as of today, uh, Mr. Chair, Honor, kidnapped victims. So our military uh, campaign is is uh, doing very good, is successful. Uh, we are successful in that area, but we would ask ourselves, but nandiyan pa sila? What, make them, what, what makes them uh, persist? So we come to other uh, dimension of the problem. So we have the political dimension. So the LGUs have uh, it's a very important role to play here. Of course, the sociocultural dimension that's why in uh, our operations, we always uh, uh, we're uh, sensitive to the cultural, to the culture, and uh, knowing cultural sensitivities of the area. Uh, we know the economic plight of our uh, countrymen there. So all of these put together uh, uh, should form part of the comprehensive 
and holistic strategy in really putting a permanent closure to this uh, problem of terrorism in uh, Hulu or in Sulu for that matter or uh, in the entire province of of Mindanao Mr. Chair your honor so uh, we're moving into that um, a comprehensive and holistic strategy approach in addressing the problem uh, and uh, putting on board uh, other stakeholders, partners, both in the private and local, CSOs, NGOs, uh, working together in addressing not only the armed component, but more importantly, the root causes of why uh, we're, they're still, they still persist. Like, uh, you know, literacy is low in that area, uh, not much job opportunities, economic opportunities are really uh, wanting. Infrastructure is also, are also wanting. And of course, uh, governance needs a lot of improvement. So all this put together would, uh, would really uh, contribute in the permanent closure of this uh, conflict in, in that area, Mr. Chair, Your Honor. General, masaya talaga ako marinig sa inyo. Marami sa mga elemento na dapat pumasok sa pagbuo ng isang peace agenda. And I will be sure to communicate uh, to my uh, old colleague in the peace movement, yung openness din ninyo, to coordinating with uh, various stakeholders on the ground, lalo na sa civil society doon, uh, tungkol uh, sa, sa peace agenda na iyon. I'm especially glad binanggit nyo yung alienation. Hindi ko madalas marinig yon sa mga uh, military officials natin, but it's really intertwined uh, with all the roots uh, of the persistent seeming attractiveness of the actually pernicious terrorism in any part of our country or indeed in any part of the world. At tingin ko kung yan ay recognize natin at matutugunan natin sa peace agenda at peace strategies on the ground, talagang mas magiging epektibo at saka long-lasting uh, yung actions natin. Uh, General, in, in relation still, to the killing of the four army officers. Uh, Lieutenant General Cirilito Sobehana, uh, commanding general now of the Philippine Army, said that the two female suicide bombers responsible for the recent blasts in Holosulu were the subjects, were the subjects of the army intelligence mission of these four army officers. Because of these two events, Tuloy, there's a theory uh, one of the theories about the possible motive that the police officers or some of them were in conspiracy with the terrorist group. In fact, during the last CA hearing, uh, Lieutenant General Corleto Vinluan admitted to the minority leader the possibility of a conspiracy between the terrorist bombers and members of the police who shot them, saying, quote, Possible yon dahil magkakamag-anak naman sa Sulu, close quote. What can you say about this, General? Yes, uh, Mr. Yes. Chair, Your Honor. Uh, those two suicide bombers were really the subject of uh, our intelligence operations at that time. And uh, we were so close to neutralizing them. Uh, we were about to take them down in a matter of minutes. We're just pinpointing. Uh, uh, we have limited the number of houses where they are. So we've just been pointing the exact house. So, uh, and uh, the takedown team was already in the vicinity. And uh, this unfortunate, uh, that unfortunate uh, uh, shooting incident happened, which, uh, you know, disrupted that operation. And the two uh, suicide bombers were alarmed and they were, to, they were able to escape the area. Because uh, we were so close. Uh, during that day, it was uh, June 29 of this year. And uh, we just monitored that they, uh, they left uh, Hulo and uh, they went back to the rejoinder group. So uh, it somehow uh, disrupted our operations. And uh, that's why uh, after that incident, we, we, uh, we warned and we, we projected, we expect that uh, another... With the escape of these two suicide bombers, we we expect uh, another uh, incident, a terror act similar to the Hulu Cathedral bombing that would be uh, executed by uh, the Abu Sayyaf group. 
And uh, indeed, uh, the, twin, the recent twin bombings was uh, perpetrated by the two uh, female suicide bombers uh, who were uh, the widows of uh, the first Filipino suicide bomber, Norman Lasuka, uh, who attempted to uh, detonate in a, a bomb uh, inside the military camp in, uh, in Sulu. And of course, uh, the other one is uh, also the widow of uh, another uh, Abu Sayyaf uh, member, Abu Talha. So, and uh, right now, uh, we did have confirmed, intelligence reports confirm uh, the identities, but we are still, uh, NBI is uh, doing some uh, forensics on this to, to further verify the identity. But for sure, they are both female female uh, suicide bomber. So uh, with that, yes, we have so many theories, Mr. Chair, Your Honor, but uh, we were holding them back because uh, investigation is now in full swing, uh, being conducted by, uh, by the NBI and, uh, of course, the DOJ, and we would not like to influence or somehow affect itong kanilang investigation. That's why... Uh, our theories of the real motive, uh, we were holding them back for our own and uh, perhaps this will be confirmed uh, by the result of the investigation being conducted by uh, DOJ uh, at this time, Mr. Chair, Your Honor. General, um, I share your hope na uh, pag na consummate na itong mga ongoing investigations, ongoing in full swing, gaya ng sinabi nyo, ay uh, ma-establish na nga ano ba talaga yung totoo para mabigyan ng hustisya lahat ng biktima, the four army officers and the 14 uh, civilians and military and PNP killed in the twin bombings at yung napakarami pang uh, sugatan. Lastly, on this uh, topic, uh, General, moving forward, no, how can you assure the community of Sulu that uh, this will not escalate and be a hindrance for the military and the police to together perform their mandate to protect the people of the Philippines. Sina at sinasabi ko po uh, emphatically yung together kasi gaya ng sinabi ng isang AFP uh, officer, ang PNP kakampi namin. So what assurance can you give to the community of Sulu or even the Philippines uh, moving forward, General? Well, after the after the incident, Mr. Chair, Your Honor, uh, Hulu and uh, Sulu, the entire Sulu was... Uh, place on lockdown, so uh, nobody could get out or get in, or those coming in uh, will be subjected to strict uh, security measures. And uh, our forces there, together with the PNP and the LGU, uh, implemented stricter security measures. Again, uh, curfew uh, was uh, implemented uh, aggressively, and checkpoints uh, Additional checkpoints were were established. Then uh, intelligence monitoring were uh, enhanced, and uh, of course, uh, additional forces are expected to be deployed in the area. Uh, PNP staff uh, was already there, and uh, expect additional forces also coming from uh, the armed forces. So uh, all of these are uh, in accordance with. Presidential Proclamation 55, uh, declaring state of uh, lawless violence in uh, Sulu and the entire province of Mindanao. And uh, we're banking in the provisions of this uh, uh, Presidential Proclamation, uh, Mr. Chair, Your Honor, for uh, the added security measures. So uh, the situation now is uh, under control. It's... Uh, manageable and uh, being taken care of uh, by the armed forces of the Philippines uh, with the support of the Philippine National Police and the uh, LGUs in the area. And right now we are uh, we are now in the process of crafting a memorandum order to, to spell out specific uh, measures in accordance with Presidential Proclamation 55 to really implement stricter measures 
as far as security is concerned, and a more holistic and comprehensive uh, approach in dealing with the security problem in the province of uh, Sulu, involving other agencies like uh, DOJ. Of course, we have to enhance maritime security in the area, and uh, all other agencies. Uh, of course, uh, the Straptom would, uh, group, uh, our public information uh, group, would also be would play an important role, particularly uh, to check and address the recruitment of Abu Sayyaf and even radicalization of the youth. So uh, we will do this, uh, and all of those will be incorporated in the memorandum order. It would serve as an implementing uh, the implementing guidelines of uh, Presidential Proclamation 55 uh, in the province of Sulu and some parts of Mindanao. Mr. Chair, Your Honor. Of course, General, um, the way you describe it, itong patuloy na coordination between the AFP and the PNP post uh, twin bombings, uh, na-visualize ko pa rin na uh, isang positive element dapat sa loob nito ay yung patuloy at uh, sa huli, kompletong pag-establish ng truth at pagbibigay ng justice dun sa uh, apat na army officers na napatay two months previously uh, in order to give justice to those first four victims in the series of violence so far uh, and with the full support both of the AFP and PNP. Katulad ng peace processes na pinag-uusapan natin kanina, kailangan uh, may truth and justice para magkaroon ng kapayapaan. And in the same way I see na yung pagbibigay ng hustisya sa unang apat na biktimang iyon noong June uh, would be part of really um, reinforcing the the peaceful cooperation and effective cooperation also post twin bombings both ng AFP at PNP. And um, yes, General. Yes, uh, Mr. Chair, Your Honor, uh, that is also our, our our prayer and our hope that uh, the truth would be ferreted out, would come out, and uh, justice will be served. Uh, not only for the four, but especially for their families. Mr. Chair, Your Honor. And I and we share, fervently share that prayer with you, General. Dun sa huling paksako, uh, General, yesterday uh, I filed a resolution on the alleged collusion between Filipinos and foreign powers in the construction of artificial islands and military installations by the Chinese in the West Philippine Sea. Over the past decade, China has constructed artificial islands with a combined total area of close to 3,000 acres on maritime features it occupies in the West Philippine Sea. Despite assurances to the contrary, China has militarized these artificial islands, installing long-range sensor arrays, port facilities, runways, bunkers for fuel and munitions, and barracks for military personnel. Um, first of all, General, uh, what can you say about this alleged collusion that led to the militarization of disputed islands? And if there is indeed collusion, should Filipinos and domestic corporations be made liable for aiding and abetting the construction of these artificial islands? Would you consider these acts as treason? So, uh, Mr. Chair, Your Honor, uh, as far as uh, that issue is concerned, uh, we're leaving that to the expertise and uh, of the concerned agencies, particularly the DOTR, the DPWH, who awarded really these uh, projects to uh, Chinese uh, entities who allegedly participated also in uh, the building of those uh, artificial islands in the uh, West Philippine Sea. But nonetheless, uh, Mr. Chair, Your Honor, on the part of the Armed Forces of the Philippines, uh, and of course, uh, in support to the national policy of uh, our government, uh, we're still uh, uh, hoping and uh, adhering to the peaceful uh, resolution of uh, the issues there, the conflicting claims, and uh, we are also one with other nations in the in the region in calling for a rules-based order in the area. 
and uh, of course uh, your armed forces will uh, protect to the best of our capabilities what is ours in that area, Mr. Uh, Chair, Your Honor. We'll protect our territorial waters and we will maintain presence and secure the eight remaining islands which uh, we are occupying, Mr. Chair, Your Honor. Uh, General, of course, uh, everyone around the table, uh, everyone uh, in this room, everyone online uh, is one in uh, always um, promoting peaceful resolutions of these problems uh, and striving for a rules-based order na matagal na rin uh, inupuan ng China uh, in, in the effort to come up with that code of conduct uh, in the South China Sea. And uh, at lahat din nakikiisa about protecting uh, what is the Philippines and the Filipinos in the West Philippine Sea. Kanina po sa isang tanong ni uh, Rep. Ramirez Sato, sinabi niyo rin na you leave to concerned agencies those other areas of expertise. I certainly appreciate yung uh, mutual respect na pinapakita ng chief of staff uh, sa mga civilian agencies. But when we are talking about the militarization of disputed islands, pumapasok na sa kumbaga shop ninyo dahil kayo nga yung institusyon na uh, pinaka nagpoprotekta sa ating soberanya uh, in the in the aspect of uh, national defense but i have uh, other follow up questions related to this so hopefully the uh, the good chief of staff could um, share more with the committee um, feel freer uh, to to share more with the committee on this has the military taken steps to prevent similar incidents from occurring in the future? Halimbawa, itong eight remaining islands natin. Without conceding na hindi na tayo mag assert dun sa mga isla o mga katubigan na inangkin ng China. So, steps to prevent similar incidents in the future, General. Yes, uh, Mr. Chair, Your Honor. Uh, right now, we're uh, regularly patrolling uh, our area particularly our uh, territorial waters in West Philippine Sea. Uh, we are maintaining uh, naval presence, military presence in the area. We have been uh, also uh, closely monitoring developments. Every uh, vessel ship that are plying that area or are operating or present in that area, we are monitoring them. And we have a daily report submitted uh, to the Defense Department all the way up to the president on uh, what's happening there on a daily basis. So uh, right now, uh, we're moving into a multilateral uh, approach in uh, really addressing the problem, uh, following the diplomatic and, of course, our national policy on uh, independent foreign policy. Uh, in really dealing with these uh, issues in uh, West Philippine Sea. That's why uh, right now what we're doing is uh, we support the call for uh, a code of conduct for all, uh, not only claimant nation, but all countries in the region uh, with respect to uh, in our actions in uh, the West Philippine Sea. And uh, as far as the remaining, eight remaining islands, uh we have people there and uh in fact uh, mr chair your honor they're receiving loneliness pay there <laughs> those uh, people running those wow. those uh islands and uh we're even uh uh coming up with proposal of uh building structures in that area to really uh assert our ownership our sovereignty in, in that area mr chair your honor and I think, General, you will find strong support here, uh, at least in the Senate, because I cannot speak for our House counterparts, but sensing their own spirit about these matters, I am almost sure you will find strong support in the whole of Congress for uh, building those uh, structures. In note ko lang na napakalungkot at poignant naman nung sinabi nyo tungkol sa loneliness pay. Uh, it can only increase uh, our public's um, uh, appreciation uh, for those members uh, of the armed forces uh, who need to receive this pay because they um, they bear uh, that loneliness para lang uh, itaguyod yung uh, 
uh, so yung ating uh, soberanya dyan, pati sa mga east lang iyon. And so, dyan, uh, based on those regular patrols, uh, yung maintained naval presence, um, na, anong na-establish nyo? Are the reports that China has militarized those islands accurate? Yes, uh, Mr. Chair, Your Honor, we have... Uh... We have satellite footages of, uh, you know, there is a runway there. And uh, we've also monitored some uh, military aircraft landing there, warships uh, docking there. So uh, there is indeed military activity in the area, Mr. Chair. Do you have any idea what other military facilities and equipment, uh, Chinese military facilities and equipment are on those Philippine islands? Uh, mostly uh, monitored, uh, Mr. Chair, Your Honor, are uh, radars and uh, monitoring equipment. Uh, we haven't confirmed uh, missile silos or uh, or uh, platforms there, but definitely runways are there and uh, large uh, piers and docking areas for for uh, naval vessels. So so far, uh, those are the confirmed facilities, uh, Your Honor, Mr. Chair. At syempre, pag may runways, may mga pier, alam nga namang hindi nila ginagamit. And uh, I'm, yung binagit po ninyong unconfirmed the missile silos, but recently there were uh, reports uh, that such uh, structures exist and therefore that uh, such capabilities have been brought not only closer to Philippine uh, land territory, pero within Philippine uh, marine territory. So, uh, what effect do these islands have on China's capacity to project power in the region, so towards our own country and within the region? So definitely, Mr. Chair, Your Honor, it uh, <clears throat> extends the military reach, the range of military operations of uh, China, because uh, it would serve that area could serve as uh, or is serving as a forward base for their uh, military, so it extends uh, their reach in uh, force projection uh, in uh, in the area, Sir Chair, Your Honor. And given that, kasi uh, reasonably pwede namang sabihin ng China, ginagawa niya yun uh, uh, to uphold or to, to advance, to advance their national interest. Pero paano yung ating national interest? How does the militarization of these islands uh, how does uh, China extending her military reach sa teritoryo natin affect our country's military posture in the West Philippine Sea? Uh, so far, uh, Mr. Chair, Your Honor, uh, military activities of China are confined to the Paracel Islands, which is outside our EEZ. So uh, although it's uh, near us, near our EEZ, uh, but uh, it's still outside. But still, they pose a threat, really, because of the proximity in our uh, <clears throat> territorial waters, in our territory, in our exclusive economic zone. So, uh, so uh, what we're do what we're doing right now, Mr. Chair, Honor, is really uh, uh, monitoring uh, those activities in the area and uh, really calling for a rules-based uh, conduct order in uh, the West uh, Philippine Sea, uh, particularly uh, on the UNCLOS or the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea. This is uh, the number one law that would govern the conduct of uh, every nation in that area, Mr. Chair, Your Honor. Indeed, General, yung UNCLOS, yung number one law, at sa ilalim ng number one law na iyan, yung bansa natin, di ba, ay nanalo ng pinaka-historically significant na diplomatic and political victory so far. Nasabi ni dating Justice Carpio, nag-award hindi lang sa Pilipinas pala, pero sa buong sangkatauhan, ng largest area of commons na pwede at dapat makapangisda yung mga Pilipinong mangingisda at yung mga mangingisda rin ng uh, iba't-ibang uh, iba't ibang, uh, claimant countries uh, 
um, in the region. And of course, alam natin, uh, labas man sa EEZ natin yung para cells, dun naman yung isa pang claimant country, who I think we can study and learn from yung Vietnam, has been very assertive sa kanya namang claim doon uh, vis-a-vis China. Uh, umabot pa nga sila sa barilan, di ba? Ayaw naman nating umabot sa ganun. We are uh, standing on peaceful, diplomatic, uh, political means. Uh, pero pinapakita how other claimant countries are also very aggressive in different forms uh, about their claims. And uh, UNCLOS, talaga, uh, dapat sana ay uh, pakinabangan talaga natin ito optimally, pati ng administrasyon, because it gives really uh, an umbrella, it gives us a cover as claimant country among other claimant countries, I appreciate ilang beses yung binanggit yung ASEAN. Palagay ko malaking mayaman yung potential ng ASEAN to advance uh, a code of conduct in the South China Sea. At yung UNCLOS din ay isang uh, matibay na pundasyon for uh, the freedom of navigation operations ng iba pang mga bansa outside our home region pero mga naval powers na uh, uh, lumalayag din dito sa ating karagatan. Lastly, uh, General, what do you think of, uh, 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 similar po ito sa tanong kanina ni uh, Rep. Ramirez Sato, no? so gusto ko lang balikan yung isang parte. What do you think of DFA Secretary Luxin's statement on Friday to blacklist those companies that help build reinforcement and fortification on the islands in the West Philippine Sea, which, kaya ko binabalikan kasi... Uh, dahil kahit sinabi nyo kanina na choosing who will uh, build, build, build is beyond the purview of the AFP. Na appreciate ko yung ganyang respeto sa mga civilian agencies. Pero yung tanong ko kasi, eh, um, itong mga reinforcement at fortification ng China sa ating mga isla, couldn't they be used as an attack point against our country or as a forward base uh, to use uh, a term you used earlier? Yes, uh, Mr. Chair, Honor, uh, in the first place, yung, uh, the, how that Chinese company secured the contract, uh, we could presume that it passed through the Republic Act 9184 process or the Government Procurement Act law. And uh, we have very stringent measures there, Mr. Chair, Honor. Before one could win a bid, a government project, you really have to, to, to go through a very tedious uh, bidding, bidding process. And uh, we saw this in our modernization, modernization projects. So uh, that, uh, that statement of uh, uh, Secretary Luxin on uh, why, why uh, they should be banned because those companies were the same companies who have built those uh, islands. You know, it, uh, because it also impacts on uh, our uh, foreign relations. And uh, I really don't know uh, what's the intention of uh, Secretary Luxin there, but out of uh, patriotic and uh, perhaps uh, nationalistic standpoint, that uh, why is this company building a fort, who uh, helped build a fortress, Chinese fortress there in our uh, islands where we used to be occupying, used to be ours, has uh, won uh, such projects. So uh, I could just surmise that uh, uh, that statement is out of uh, patriotic and uh, nationalistic uh, standpoint, uh, Mr. Chair. Your Honor, but as far as uh, the legal way of how to win contracts, uh, I also presume that uh, it passed through the, you know, the the bidding process as prescribed under uh, the Public Act 9184. Mr. Chair, Your Honor. I share the impression of uh, the good general na malamang dahil sa pagkamakabayan, dahil sa pagiging patriot, ay uh, yun ang uh, statement ni Secretary Luxin. Kaya nakikiisa ako sa kanila. I'm sure na kung tayo ay nangahas magtayo ng military facility sa isang isla ng, na nasa uh, teritoryo karagatan ng China, ay aalma din siya. Kaya... Uh, nararapat lang na tayo being a friend to all and an enemy to none 
ay uh, magsulong ng isang relasyon sa China na relasyon ng equals, magkakapantay at may mutual respect uh, sa isa't isa. So uh, in closing, uh, Mr. Chairman, kung sa simula, nagsimula ako saying na I am proud and happy to see uh, General Gapay and the other uh, officers and uh, gentlemen uh, before us this morning. Sa pagtatapos ng pagtatanong ko, I would like to uh, congratulate uh, General Gilbert Gapay uh, and the other uh, high-ranking uh, officers we will be confirming this morning. I express support uh, for his confirmation as the AFP Chief of Staff as well as the confirmation of the other officers here. Uh, I am even uh, more intensely proud and more deeply happy uh, sa uh, pagharap ni General Gapay sa atin at din yung lahat uh, ngayong umaga. Maraming salamat, General, at maraming salamat, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Senator Rizan Tiveras. Senator Joel Villanueva is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and uh, thank you for this uh, opportunity. Magandang uh, uh, tahali po, uh, General Gapay. Uh, you know, I, I, I prepared a lot of questions, but most of my questions were already uh, raised. And uh, I am very happy to note that uh, listening attentively since the very beginning of this uh, deliberation to uh, General uh, Gapay, I uh, instantly become a, became a fan of uh, the Chief of Staff. Uh, I admire his uh, statements in regard to the uh, revolutionary uh, government, which is unconstitutional. I also admire his uh, uh, answers uh, to questions uh, raised by uh, Congresswoman Sato, Senator Andiveros, and Senator Coco about uh, foreign policy, about uh, his uh, call for the code of conduct. Uh, about the uh, Mutual Defense Treaty, uh, about the BFA, etc., and uh, strengthening our relationship not only to China but also to the U.S. and uh, other allies. I just have one uh, uh, concern, uh, General Gapai, uh, with your uh, statement a while ago with regard to uh, regulation of social media. Um, uh, since you mentioned that there should be a uh, regulation on social media, which uh, creates some sort of, uh, some some concern on, on concerns on my on, on my concern on my part, because I believe there's really a a, a, a problem being created with the word regulation instead of perhaps monitoring. But since you mentioned it, do you do you think that the uh, military should uh, play a greater role or a more important role in the regulation of uh, this medium. And I'm asking this question, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, General uh, Gapai, because we wanted, and I'm sure the gentleman would agree with me, that we don't want the military involvement to create a chilling effect on uh, civilian uh, institutions such as media outlets, civil society, and NGOs. May, may, I, may I hear uh, from, from the uh, nominee, Mr. Chair? Thank you. Yes, uh, Mr. Chair, Your Honor. Um, again, uh, I'd like to uh, say that uh, to clarify and qualify my, my statement on uh, regulating social media. Uh, for most, uh, it is not aim to curtail uh, our freedom of expression as uh, guaranteed in our constitution, but uh, also uh, your armed forces has the mandate to protect our people from, uh, from threats, from different uh, threats, be it internal or external, and uh, one of these threats, clear and present danger is that posed by uh, terrorism. And uh, experts would say, and our experience, not only in Marawi, would say that uh, this global uh, terror network really uh, communicates in the, in the net. It is the, their primary uh, medium to communicate with each other, to recruit, 
plan, radicalize, even uh, secure uh, financial and uh, logistical support and uh, carry out uh, terroristic acts. That's why uh, it is in that light, uh, Mr. Chair, Your Honor, that uh, when we were asked uh, on uh, some inputs in the IRR of the 2020 Anti-Terror Act, so we, we, we thought of that, that uh, perhaps we could come up with certain mechanisms to regulate not the users, but uh, social media platforms. When we say social media, we refer to the platforms like Facebook, YouTube, uh, and uh, they can be host, and they could really regulate what, what, what is being uploaded in their, uh, in their respective uh, uh, social media platforms. So uh, it is uh, in that light that uh, we proposed uh, uh, certain mechanisms. Of course, this would be done in coordination with, with the ICT and other uh, concerned agencies because uh, we have a lot of experience in that. And uh, in Marawi alone, uh, we have seen uh, why, you know, the siege, the crisis uh, was extended for four months because uh, through the internet, you know, that the call of ISIS, do not come here to Syria or Iraq, go to the Philippines, to Marawi and reinforce our brothers there fighting the government. So it was done through the internet by uh, that ISIS uh, uh, terror network and also uh, through through uh, the internet uh, the Mu'ute ISIS uh, terror group was able to recruit in the area and were able to radicalize our, the youth in uh, Marawi and some parts of uh, Lanao del Sur. And uh, likewise, Mr. Chair, Your Honor, uh, if you may recall those lone wolf attacks in Europe, in U.S. and in Africa, the perpetrators, when they opened, most of them died. When the authorities opened their uh, social media accounts, uh, from there they, uh, it was revealed that they were recruited, radicalized, and even taught how to conduct terroristic actions through the social media. That's why... Our call for regulation is not intended to curtail the freedom of expression of the social media users, but the social media platforms. And uh, we are uh, glad to note, uh, Mr. Chair, Your Honor, that right now, these uh, social media platforms, uh, Facebook, YouTube, um, Microsoft, and even Twitter, have grouped together and uh, they now have this global internet forum to counter terrorism. So they develop in their respective systems certain algorithms that would detect terroristic materials or posts that would be launched in their respective platforms. And mag-aalarma kagad yun, Mr. Chair, Your Honor. Uh, mag-aalarma so they could, they could trace where they where that post came from, and uh, they would investigate. It could take down right there and then these accounts that are being used by the terrorist group. So, Mr. Chair, Your Honor, it is in that light that uh, we are proposing, uh, not regulating actually, but uh, coming up with certain mechanisms. Because uh, this is a best, one of the best practice of uh, other countries in Europe, in the United States, and he even here in ASEAN, Malaysia, Indonesia, even Myanmar are already having these mechanisms and uh, parang uh, tayo na lang alongside with a few other countries na walang mechanisms na kagaya nito. That's why uh, we are proposing if we could come up with the... Uh... Yes, uh, thank you. Uh, very Sir, much, uh, Chair, Your Honor. Thank you very much, Sir General. And uh, it's... it's uh, uh, been clarified, especially when you emphasize the word the platforms, but uh, still, no, in the word of the word regulation somehow uh, caught our attention. But I, 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 I agree with you in some ways. We have, we have to balance everything. I also agree that 
uh, is the role of the AFP to protect our people. And uh, we want you to know that we are 100% supporting AFP's, AFP's uh, fight against uh, uh, terrorism, the evils of uh, terrorism. Uh, you, 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 the, the question I raised a while ago is, uh, you, you think that the military should play a, a greater role in uh, monitoring or perhaps contributing in the uh, uh, looking out for uh, terrorist, uh, terrorists in the uh, social media, looking at their uh, plat plat platforms. Uh, Mr. Chairman, may, may I ask if the general would also uh, agree or would you think the military, for example, should be uh, given the power to take down websites, ban IP addresses, and conduct uh, surveillance on suspected terrorists? Uh, Mr. Chair, Your Honor, uh, the Armed Forces being one of the implementers of uh, of uh, the 2020 Anti-Terror Act, um, uh, we are bound to follow and our actions will be limited within the meds and what's What's the provisions of uh, the 2020 Anti-Terror Act? And uh, what we're looking at are the provisions uh, enumerated in Section 10. Uh, terror Acts. Because uh, although it's not specified in the law, but uh, in the internet, in the net, particularly in the dark web, in the dark web they they have this very clandestine uh, websites where they operate on, and it's very really very hard to track. And uh, it is also in this uh, aspect that the armed forces could help. A lead agency, particularly the ACT, in monitoring uh, in monitoring these uh, activities of the terror groups, Mr. Chair, Your Honor. Sir, you're talking about providing, for instance, intelligence, uh, Mr. Mr. Chairman, or is there really a need for military to be involved indirectly? Uh, policing the web when it uh, can coordinate its uh, terrorist uh, detection activities with uh, PNP, a, uh, AFP, and other uh, civilian uh, uh, agencies anyway. Yes, Mr. Chair, Your Honor, uh, perhaps on a, on a support role, on a support role we could do because we, we also have a cyber infrastructure in our forces that could help in the total effort. Uh, we could, you know, help uh, whoever will be, uh, probably it's a DICT here. Uh, we could assist them. We could perform support roles in uh, more, and even recommending to them uh, some sites to be taken down. And most of these, uh, the Chair, Your Honor, are uh, in the, they're operating and it's really very hard without without that infrastructure, the technology, the training, expertise. It would be very hard to track. That's why, uh, and we have this capability in our forces, Mr. Chair, Your Honor, which could be used uh, in a support role to whoever, uh, perhaps, uh, supporting the Anti-Terrorism Council or even the DICT in the sites being used by the terror groups, Mr. Chair, Your Honor. Uh, it's, it's now clear to me about, uh, I mean, with regard to the supporting role that the military wanted to uh, play. Perhaps that's the main reason, General, uh, why uh, I have seen a lot of uh, ads uh, on, on uh, uh, for, for, for cyber uh, team of... Uh, uh, the AFP, I think you are uh, hiring computer programmers uh, right now. Is that correct, uh, Mr. Chair? Yes, Mr. Chair, Your Honor. Uh, we're, we're, uh, it's a continuing effort for us to really uh, build up and enhance our uh, cyber defense and security capability. And it's uh, preparing for the... No, that's the only future. It's now, uh, Mr. Chair. Thank you. And I think it's clear now that... Uh, the job to police electronic uh, crimes uh, 
uh, still uh, mainly under the jurisdiction, for example, of Interpol, NBI, uh, PNP, and other uh, uh, civilian agencies. And uh, the military is there to uh, support. And uh, again, I thank the gentleman for uh, clarifying uh, the, the issues that uh, that uh, concerns this uh, representation. And uh, at this juncture, I would like to put on record that uh, I am supporting the uh, the proper time the confirmation of uh, General Gapay. Maraming salamat po at magandang tahan. Maraming salamat po, Senator Joel Villanueva. Senator Tolentino. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. General Gapay, are you still around? It's almost... Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. It's almost lunchtime, and perhaps you're familiar with the phrase, piece of cake. Piece of cake is a phrase that came from the British Royal Air Force, meaning to say it's an easy mission. But yours will not be an easy mission. We've heard a lot of the statements coming from my colleagues, uh, about the predicament the country is facing right now. My, my questions are not really uh, grilling questions, but icing on the cake, so to speak, uh, General Gapai. I would have been there first time. This is the first time I'm not physically present in a CA meeting. I'm sorry. Uh, I should have uh, been there to support you as well. I still remember years, years ago when you, when I was when I visited your camp in uh, Camp O'Donnell, if I'm not mistaken, when you were still Head of the Mechanized Infantry Division. Is that correct? Matagal na yun, uh, General. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, in in Kapastarlak, Your Honor. Kapastarlak. And I admire your uh, your accomplishment as head of the Mechanized uh, Infantry Division. I, I've seen your static display. I had bre breakfast in your camp. I I am even amazed by how you transformed that Mechanized Division into uh, an integrated unit. But I've seen your records. You, you, you were with the... Uh, Mechanized battalion. So, more or less, the, the the a huge chunk of your career was uh, involved in the mechanized uh, component of the Philippine Army. But I also noticed, General, that you took some courses relative to air traffic, air traffic control, and you have a basic aviators uh, course. Is that correct, General? Yes, uh, Mr. Chair, Your Honor, I'm uh, an Army aviator, also. Yes, I'm likewise a frustrated pilot. The reason why I'm saying this, General, is that there are good news. There were some good news emanating from the U.S. State Department that uh, perhaps early first quarter of next year or the latter part of this year, we will be receiving from the excess, some excess defense articles or components coming from the State Department, specifically uh, four Black Hawk helicopters, or Cobra helicopters, is that correct? Yes, uh, Mr. Chair, Your Honor. The, the reason why I'm, I'm uh, spreading this into the record is because previously we have an Army Aviation Battalion. It's based in Web Ecija, and I'm, I'm, I'm really a, an active su supporter of that uh, battalion. And now it has been transformed into an Army Aviation regiment uh what what would be the the, the meaning of this uh, why are we expanding this uh, mr chair your honor uh the aviation capability or the aviation component of the philippine army is one of the priority capability which uh, the army is developing uh by doctrine uh, it is an integral part of the brigade combat team uh, this is the small, highly deployable uh, uh, formation of the Philippine Army, which we can project uh, anywhere in the country, and uh, it has to be backed up by an aviation unit. It, uh, integral to it is an aviation unit, Mr. Chair, Your Honor. And, uh, of course, uh, because of revolution in the military affairs brought about by technology, uh, the battle space on land does not only confine on land. We have other dimensions. We have to consider uh, the airspace above it. And of course, uh, uh, the cyber, the cyber dimension. So uh, as uh, the battlefield becomes more, more uh, complicated and intricate, the more that we need the uh, capabilities such as 
uh, an aviation unit for the Philippine Army. That's why uh, it's part of the Army Modernization Program. And uh, in fact, Mr. Chair, Your Honor, right now, uh, the Army Aviation Regiment is uh, in full swing in uh, training rotary wing pilots. So there's an ongoing, uh, I think, 10 students undergoing uh, rotary wing training in uh, Fort Magsaysay in uh, Nueva Ecija in preparation for, for the delivery of uh, modern equipment coming from the modernization pipeline, Mr. Chair, Your Honor. Thank you, General. The, the, re the reason why I, I asked that question is that I'm really, as I've said, I'm really in support of that uh, uh, initiative. These are not doctrinal uh, issues. But but right now, uh, as I uh, glance your records, we only have four fixed wings. We have a Cessna 172, a Cessna 150, two Cessna 172, a Cessna 150, and a Cessna 206. So how would that... Uh, how would that uh, match your your dreams uh, and vision for an, an enhanced uh, Army Aviation Regiment uh, had it not been for that uh, excess units coming from the United States? How, how do you project this? Holding uh, question, Konato General. Would you, would you project that during your term, as what you've done during your stint as the Mechanized Infantry Division Head, we will have other airstrips for the Army Aviation Regiment, perhaps an airstrip based in... Uh, Kalayaan, an airstrip base somewhere in somewhere in a in an area near Fuga Island, uh, among others. Do you do you envision the Army Aviation Regiment to be like that? Because uh, for me, General, ang ang ay to lang ang pangarap ko rin naman. Dumating po yung pagkakatao na pag nagkaroon tayo ng mga disasters, mag naman mangyare. Eh, yung mga air assets ng Coast Guard, Air Force, Navy, including the PNP will be joined by the Army Aviation Regiment in distributing relief items uh, in helping our distressed uh, uh, kababayan. So how do you foresee this, uh, General, your vision towards uh, this, this all uh, uh, dreams? That's my last question. Yes, Mr. Chair, Your Honor. Uh, as far as the air trip, air strips are concerned, uh, usually these are uh, dual-use uh, infrastructure being uh, used by both for civilian and uh, military use. Uh, most of our airstrips are like that. But uh, what we do is we just uh, establish uh, a small base near the airstrip or the airport, airfield, uh, alongside with uh, the Philippine Air Force uh, units deployed in the area. So uh, that is as far as uh, airstrip is concerned. But uh, the one in Mebesia, is really in Fort Magsaysay, Mr. Chair, Your Honor, is the home base of the Philippine Army Aviation. And uh, also that is uh, a primary consideration in our uh, basis uh, in strategic basing program of the Philippine Army, identifying uh, airstrips uh, all over the country where we could put uh, air detachments not only for the Philippine Army, but for the Navy and the Air Force as well. So uh, usually when it comes to airstrips, uh, there will be dual use. Some would be uh, civilian and military use, and, but uh, there are also a few dedicated for military use only, just like the one in Lumbia, it, uh, where uh, it used to be a civilian and military use. Now it's purely military, it's being uh, administered by the Air Force. And uh, there are similar airstrips all over the country, Mr. Chair, Your Honor, which uh, being eyed by the armed forces to be developed as uh, forward uh, air bases or air detachments by uh, the air, different air components of the AFP, Your, uh, Mr. Chair, Your Honor. And, and perhaps uh, as, a la as a last suggestion, uh, General, there could probably be a, a, a paper, a white paper that could emanate from the Army uh, Doctrine Command or what, what, do you, what have you there, uh, utilizing some of the private aviation flying schools which are near your area, and this would probably uh, 
lessen the cost in so far as training our pilots or even some private uh, uh, flying stu school students can cross enroll in your small Cessnas that would probably augment their, your fuel needs. A lot of other innovations could probably be uh, think uh, would probably emanate from your during your stint. So yun lang po, uh, General, I, uh, Mr. Chair, consider me as one of the movements uh, for the confirmation of uh, General Gilbert Kapay along with the 29 other senior officers. And I congratulate you in advance. I repeat again, this will not be a piece of cake. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. The yeah, Chair has some uh, questions in pursuit of the points raised by Senator Coco Pimentel and Senator Tolentino as well. And I will premise my questions on the information that ideally, military expenditures must be increased to at least 2% of the country's gross domestic product, you know, to attain minimum defense posture, and at least to be at par with our ASEAN neighbors, especially those uh, engaged in conflict with China. Uh, however, looking at our 2020 budget, we are way behind the food trays. As an illustration, our start expenditures in 2020, current year, you know, roughly 192 billion pesos. And it's just about 0.9% of the country's uh, projected GDP. And this was before the COVID-19 pandemic. No, and as a point of comparison, uh, other countries similarly engaged in uh, maritime conflict with China spent more than more on their defense expenditures in 2019. Vietnam, for example, 5.1 billion US dollars or 255 billion pesos, representing 2% of GDP. Japan, of course, no contest, no, 47.6 billion US dollars or 2.3 trillion pesos. India, 71.1 billion US dollars or 3.6 trillion pesos. My question is, now, what is the current status of the AFP modernization program? We need the purview of RA7898 passed in 2002 and RA10349 passed in 2014. Now, I have some data here though. Out of the total 233.6 billion pesos appropriated, including those provided by other sources like PCDA, alam nyo ito, no? uh, government arsenal, malampaya, EOE funded projects, including interest income. So I would like to find out from you how much more budget is needed to address the gap in your modernization program. Mr. Chair, Your Honor, uh, uh, if you will look at the long list of modernization projects which uh, we need in our forces, uh, if we would uh, subtract those uh, that, has, that have been funded already, that leaves us with, with another uh, more than 300 billion, Your Honor, of unfunded projects for, for the second You need rest. 300 billion more. Yes, Mr. Chair. But looking at the appropriations you know, and fund releases, out of the 233.6 billion uh, appropriations, including other sources, you know, those coming from other sources, ang fund releases nyo nasa 193 billion pesos. In other words, there's still uh, remaining 40 billion pesos unreleased. So my question is, Bakit a release? Is this a, an issue of absorptive capacity on the part of the armed forces? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair, Your Honor. Uh, it is uh, primarily because of uh, the absorptive capacity uh, resulting from the very tedious uh, uh, procurement process. Because uh, our modernization projects also it adheres to Republic Act 9184, uh, Mr. Chair, Your Honor. The general provisions of 1984. Yes, Mr. Chair. Your That's Honor. why you're pursuing uh, the defense procurement, procurement uh, uh, program, program. Or, or bill, bill uh, yeah. in the Senate. And I'd like to inform you na natabunal lang no anti-terrorism act because it has been referred to my committee, the uh, Committee on, National, on Defense and Security. 
And I assure you that uh, uh, we will address that uh, in due time. But again, yung budget deliberations is forthcoming. So anyway, we'll address that uh, uh, accordingly. So you still need 300 billion pesos. Assuming that it's given to you, there's still a problem of absorptive capacity. Because, you know, yung tedious uh, uh, provisions or compliance to the provisions ng 9184, kung, if you're not running afoul of the law, 9184, wala kayong problema. There could be other problems, you know, uh, attendant to sa mga procurement nyo to address your AAFP modernization. What are these problems? The, the most common ones. Bakit nagkakaroon ng problema with 9184? Uh, in the bidding process, uh, Mr. Chair, Your Honor, uh, usually pag may nanalo na may, may mga magko-complain, yung mga natalo, mga contractors, that's one. Uh, sabi ko nga, yung procurement namin parang, uh, parang election din yan eh. <laughs> Walang gustong umamin na natalo sila. Dinaya daw. Yeah. So, ganun din yan, Mr. Chair, Your Honor, uh, Five years. Uh, yeah, I understand that. Sa procurement that. namin, uh, ganun nga, yung mga, and it costs delay. And pag may, then it will be a legal battle na. So the project would be put on hold and napakahabang uh, proseso eh, until the Bids and Awards Committee would, after uh, reviewing it, pag nag-failure of bid, so reset tayo, sir, sa back to square one. And usually, yung dalawang taon, sir, mabilis na yun eh. It's the usual from the approval by the Defense Department to delivery, ay na seryo na uh, medyo mabilis na yung two years. That's why, pag, that is assuming the bidding process uh, would go on smoothly. So pag nagkaroon ng problema, bumabalik ulit sir. That's why uh, it impacts on, uh, and the uh, DBM only releases the funds pag meron ng award, notice of award. So, and uh, sa bandang dulo na yun sir ng procurement process. So, so pag nakaproblema, balik to square one. That's why uh, these delays in uh, kaya hindi na release lahat, uh, Mr. Chair, Your Honor. Yeah. Because of uh, problems like this. Uh, but that's mostly... just one aspect of the problem. Ano? Yung lagi may nagko-complain, pupunta sa korte, may tiyaro. One other problem is yung possible graft and corruption attendance sa mga bidding as in field health. No? And I heard, not, this is not during your time, but uh, even before this administration, uh, we used to hear uh, problems encountered uh, uh, in, in procurement because of some shenanigans also uh, in the uh, bidding process. So I just hope that under your watch, and you will uh, stay there uh, and up to February right? next year, unless uh, extended. And I hope you'll be extended because uh, you seem very fit and, uh, and qualified uh, to, handle the, uh, to handle the job. So... I just hope that you will also address that particular issue or problem. Yung issue of corruption uh, attendant to sa, pa, sa procurement process. Because we're talking here of hundreds of billions of pesos. And I just hope that uh, you, you strictly look into this matter. So that's all for the chair. And I understand... Mr. Chair. Sir? Who wants to be recognized? Majority leader? Mr. Chair. Uh, Senator Antiveros is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just one quick follow-up question, Mr. Chair. Kaugnay po ng 300 billion pesos na kailangan pa sana para sa AFP modernization. General, bakit ba? Magkano na bang natatanggap ng AFP halimbawa mula sa BCDA? Uh, Mr. Chair, I can answer uh, for you, General Gapay, if you don't have the details because I have it here. BCDA... Uh, <laughs> So, sa 78, 98, 12.9 billion under or sa fiscal year 2020, 20.029 uh, billion, but only 6.8 billion has been released. Mm. So, so, only so, okay. yeah, 12 so, plus uh, 20 dapat, pero 6.8 lang. So, yun, nasa mga 27 billion. 27B, Mr. Chair, out of, opo, out of the projected, did, did the Chair say 120B earlier? 20, 
for 2020 oh, and uh, mm -hmm. under 7898 12 so that's 32 32 yeah, out of BCBA. Ano Pero ano po yung inanticipate sa simula Mr. Chair or for those years Sorry uh, Opo. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Itinatansya ko lang po, 32B so far, pero magkano yung in-expect? Para lang ma matignan natin kung nagde-deliver ba siya dun sa projection. Uh, Mr. Chair, Your Honor, uh, these are 32B was, is the amount we received, but uh, we expect more. Uh, several billions more. Uh, as a result of uh, of the use of uh, in the sale of uh, military reservations in the past, and right now, yung ibang under lease, uh, long term lease, we expect some uh, revenues also there, but uh, there's still uh, a large amount uh, unremitted yeah. uh, by the BCDA. But on record, ang utang sa inyo ng BCDA thirteen point two billion. Singilin nyo yon. That's not included. Yes, Hindi pa included dito yung sinasabi mong yung future or yung current. No? Ito yung gap. Ito yung uh, utang na hindi binibigay sa inyo. Yes, unremitted. That is correct. Yes, Senator Antiveras. Yes, Mr. Chair. Salamat po para doon and salamat kay General. Kasi nga kung yung 32B so far, ang nipis pala, no? parang 10% pa lang nung halimbawa yung, yung kakailanganin pang 300 billion. Na, nakakagulat lang kasi um, BCDA was a very, uh, is a very ambitious um, enterprise and talagang we expect much from it. So nakakagulat na halos a little more than 10% lang so far ang nare-remit kumpara sa kakailanganin pa nating 300B for uh, modernization. Yeah. One last... Yes, Mr. Chair. Oh, sorry, please, please go Madam ahead. Chair. Chair, one last fact lang po. Sa financial report for uh, calendar year 2018, BCDA distributes from 50 to 72.5% of the net proceeds from its asset disposition activities to different government beneficiaries, but chiefly to uh, AFP. So just, just for further information uh, of our committee, uh, Mr. Chair. So malaki pa yung potential na kailangan ma-realize ng BCDA pala. Nakakagulat lang, Chair. Salamat to po, Mr. Chair. Point, no, General Gapay, meron ka bang guesstimate man lang uh, as to how much more BCDA on top of the 13 billion na uh, unremitted? Guesstimate lang. So we can more or less uh, program because I'll be sponsoring and defending your budget no, in, in sept come September. So I also want to be educated. Uh, based on uh, the income generating uh, assets out of real uh, the real uh, state assets of the armed forces, uh, I have a guesstimate set of uh, another uh, ten to fifteen billion more. The next, maybe in the next uh, five years. Ah, five years, ten to fifteen. Oh. Konti lang ito. Konti lang. Yes, mm -hmm. po, Mr. Chair. How about what's the status of your government arsenal? Because this is one other source of your uh, income, ano? Uh, under 78, 98, 92, it's only 92 million, ano? And then uh, 79 million uh, in 2020. So how would you enhance yung income generation ng uh, government arsenal? Uh, primarily, it's... Uh we are modernizing uh, the government arsenal by investing on new equipment. Lumana sir yung mga equipment natin doon. And uh, mas mahal pa <laughs> minsan yung ginagawa natin bala than procuring outside. Mas mahal pa yung cost production. And it's located cost. in a very large uh, estate, di ba? Track of land. Yes, Mr. Chair, Your Honor. So can you not make recommendation i convert yun na lang sale of part of the uh, uh, real estate being occupied by government arsenal para may, meron kayong pang-modernize. Yes, Mr. Chair. How many Robert? hectares is that? Uh, I'm not sure of the the size of uh, uh, the real property of government arsenal. But what we're looking at is uh, uh, subleasing or leasing a portion of that. Not really sale, Your Honor, uh, uh, for added revenues. And uh, it could be uh, a site for the the local defense industries later on, which 
We are trying to Is this develop. Is it Balanga, Bataan? Lima, 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 sir. Lima, Bataan. So, kung, kung list. Anyway, saka na lang natin pag-usapan yan. Eh, it's past, it's almost one o'clock. Uh, the chair will now recognize, yeah, majority leader. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'll, I'll uh, have a quick manifestation. Uh, uh, General, unang una, thank you for our telephone conversation yesterday, no? And that, that is with regards to uh, the Philippine Military Academy's policy on uh, admission. Now, now, let me tell you, I'm sure you're aware of this because this will be now your sixth confirmation hearing from the first one which you had as a when you turned colonel. And I am sure in the past you've heard me say the same thing. Because uh, kahit nung panahon pa ni Chief of Staff uh, General Visayas, sinabi ko na rin to. And uh, let me now go to the particular point that uh, I hope the provision in the charter of the PMA with regards to congressional allocation of uh, incoming cadets be followed this time, no? What we in Mindanao uh, observe is that if you look at the roster of alumni, marami ang grad, ang kadete na galing Ilocos, Baguio, Pangasinan, uh, met galing Luzon. Simply because Unang una, they receive such information about entrance exam of PMA. Whereas in Mindanao, uh, especially in the far flung provinces, we sometimes receive, we often do not receive information that there is an entrance exam. Pangalawa, kahit kung alam man nung, uh, nung, nung interesado, it will cost for him to travel from his province to the urban areas where the tests are uh, normally held, no? I Upon my request, the PMA included the city of Mati as a testing center. But now I'm speaking in behalf of uh, all provinces and districts to be given equal chance of uh, <clears throat> having a cadet from their area enter the PMA. So, in other words, magiging open admission provided that they pass the physical and medical examination, pero still selective retention. Their retention at the academy will depend on their performance. And to put on record, uh, the Secretary of National Defense, General Lorenzana, is a product of a congressional allocation during his time when he entered the academy, the PMA. No? Now, I already thought of not saying that now, kasi nag-usap naman tayo kahapon, but... Uh, Boss, you, you have until February no, to be the chief of staff. Kaya I said this is a matter of uh, urgent concern because the exam for PMA will be on September 16 for the school year 2021 to 2022. So a directive, if you will agree with me and with my concern, a directive from you as the chief of staff to now implement congressional allocations will be perfect by this time so that it can already be operationalized for school year 2021-2022. And uh, lubos-lubosin ko na, General, binanggit ko na rin to dito, and I also mentioned until February kayo, if, if your term will not be extended, 
so that those who are eyeing for the position uh, will already know my question by then kung hindi pa to na implement during your time. But I hope I will not be asking the same question during their confirmation kasi as you assured me yesterday, you will definitely implement this through a directive. So, in general, I'd like to put that on record and I also would like to hear your uh, reply so that it could also be put on record. Thank you, General. Thank you, Chairman. Yes, uh, Mr. Yes. Chair, Your Honor. It's, uh, uh, we used to have that. Uh, there will be a nominee or an allocation for every congressional district in the country. So that yung uh, mga kadete natin, uh, each uh, area would be uh, ably represented. So uh, right now, sir, uh, we're, we're, we're issuing the, the policy on that. And, uh, and right now, our entrance exam is extended. Before, we, we used to hold it for, for, for a day. But right now, it's extended until October. Because of COVID, because kailangan mas social distancing don sa testing sites natin, sir. Kaya we were going to have this over the two-month period until October. And uh, perhaps by that time, sir, uh, if not within my authority, uh, SND's authority, that we could take in. Anyway, it's open naman, sir. Just, just uh, your nominee or your, uh, your candidate can just go to the testing site and uh, perhaps we'll come up with a quick uh, requirements on this and of course uh, uh, informing uh, our uh, representatives uh, all over the country of uh, this uh, about the, the PMA entrance exam. So uh, definitely, sir, uh, I'll give you a feedback on this. It's uh, being studied, uh, it's ongoing by our J1 uh if we could implement this during this uh, PMA entrance exam. Yeah, as an addendum, you know, if I may. Uh, for the information of Congressman Almario, uh, during our time, it was a uh, congressional allocation. And si SND Lorenzana was actually my plebe, so inabot ko rin yung congressional allocation. But I don't know how it will come into play to some competitive examination, entrance examination. Passing the examination is not a guarantee that you will be included in the quota. Remember, it's competitive. The first 300 or the first 400 or, or the first 500 of, say, 5,000 or 10,000 examinees, yun lang ang kukunin. So if we allow strictly congressional allocation, then I don't know how it will be uh, a competitive examination. You mean to say that for every congressional district, merong quota? It will also deny those in the region of Senator Amy Marcos who are qualified or competent enough to pass the competitive examination to be denied. If I don't know. But this is up to you to, uh, to study, you know. Kasi kung we will abide uh, strictly those uh, congressional allocation, we'll be denying more qualified examinees entrance examination yes. in other regions. Diba? Kasi aapaw sila, mag-overflow sila. So, I don't know. It's, it's up to you. So, actually, sir, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, there are many uh, examinees. Uh, those who take the... Like uh, in, in September, how many applied to take the examination? Uh, so, uh, on the average, uh, Mr. Chair, your honor, 13 to 15,000 take. Okay, out take, of 15,000, say for school year 2021 to 2022, how many will be admitted Af uh, after uh, med uh, medical after exam. mental and physical examination? Ilan ang quota for next year? About 400, then, Mr. Chair, your honor. Yon, siya sabi ko, Congressman Almario. 400 will be admitted out of 10 to 15,000 examinees. So if we follow the congressional allocation scheme, then uh, papano yon? 
Kung may, may merong mas uh, qualified sa ibang regions, but would not make it because the quota is limited to a certain number. That's my that's my concern. Yes, uh, Majority Leader. Mr. Chairman, thank you for your inputs. No? Uh, well, ang sagot ko ba, let's leave it up to them at the PMA and the uh, Chief of Staff to think about it. Pero if I may, kung 400, and then dagdagan natin ng 250, so there'll be 650 freshmen sa academy. So that will now marry the two together, may congressional allocation and may competitive uh, admission. But then, since the retention will be selective, depending on their performance, uh, doon na magbabawas from, from uh, the, fr the first year to the second year. Eh, kung talagang hindi performing yung mga nasa congressional quota or whoever, then mag-trim mag mag down na. And then we, the academy will still come up with the best among the best. Yes. Yes, uh, Mr. Chair, Your, Your Honor. I'd uh, just like to inform uh, uh, the Chairman, sir, that uh, there is a uh, issued by DND for, uh, to implement uh, at least uh, for the examinees uh, to have congressional allocation. And uh, this was already relayed to uh, uh, the PMA superintendent, Mr. Chair, Your Honor starting uh, class 2024. 20, so uh, the other, as we implement this year, uh, I'm sure uh, there'll be other concerns and problems that would arise. We will uh, address them accordingly uh, to make sure that uh, more or less it will be uh, congressional allocation be accommodated at the academy vis-a-vis uh, -vis, uh, the competition among the among the applicants. So we will marry this here and uh, I'll be directing and forming a technical working group on this so that we could come up with some uh, recommendations uh, as soon as possible. But the directive, yeah. Mr. Chair, uh, Your Honor, uh, has been issued already uh, by the Defense Department. For example, uh, from what region did you come from, General Gapay? Region 3, sir. Region 3. Imagine kung nag-overflow yung quota sa Region 3. Walang number one yung class 86. Kasi hindi siya na-admit. <laughs> See my point? And these are the things, are Mr. You? Chair, Your Honor, yeah. we will uh, look into all this. We will simulate and uh, we'll come up with with the uh, guidelines on this. Thank you. And we are will you? inform uh, uh, Congress accordingly, Mr. Chair. Are you satisfied, uh, Congressman Almario, or not yet? Very satisfied, uh, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> Thank you. Tsaka gutom na rin. <laughs> Don't you already know if you to it that uh, somebody from Mati <laughs> left the academy. <laughs> okay. the, the... Hindi. Sabi niya gumagawa. Parang policy. You know. The last will be Senator Christopher, Christopher Bongo uh, who wants to make a manifestation. Senator Gold, you recognized. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair and fellow colleagues. Uh, medyo uh, tanghali na, so iklihan ko na lang. Marami sana ang tanong. I rise to express my uh, gratitude for and uh, congratulations to our uniformed personnel who will be confirmed today, headed by uh, General uh, Gilbert uh, Gapay. Uh, I heard that uh, he was a uh, top notcher of his uh, class in PMA of uh, class uh, 1986. Classmate po ito ni Bato, and he was the lead in Joint Task Force. Uh, the other member of Class 86, Your Honor. <laughs> and uh, he was also the lead in Joint Task Force Haribon, which was in charge of uh, securing Davao after the September 2016 bombing of the Rojas uh, Night uh, Market. Uh, thank you, uh, General uh, Gapay. And of course, uh, Lieutenant General uh, uh, Jose Boy Faustino. Uh, ito po yung East Lincoln and then uh, sa Dabao rin po uh, Lieutenant General uh, Franco Nemesio Gacal Major General Gilbert Saret Major General Alfredo Rosario Colonel Jaime Datuin Colonel uh, Hilario De Vera Jr. Navy Captain John De Villa Navy Captain Stephen Tubalia 
AB Captain Jose Rene Nartates, uh, Colonel Fili Meno Carion, Colonel Emerson de los Santos, Colonel uh, Rogelio Jericho Bonagua, Colonel Franca Malanquil, Colonel Rolando Paredes, Colonel uh, Noel Tolentino, Navy Captain Levy Carane, Navy Captain uh, Mateo Carido, Navy Captain Norsal Dimaporo, Navy Captain uh, Romel Marcos, Navy Captain uh, Ariel Palisok, Navy Captain Edwina Lucrecia Taylor, Colonel Stephen Cabanlet, Colonel Zaldi Joneda, Colonel Dennis Hernandez, Colonel Joel Lazo, Colonel Joseph Tobias, Colonel Alan Gulapa, Colonel Aysen Perdido, Colonel Enrito Lebeco. Uh, salat po, maraming salamat. Our country will forever be indebted uh, to, to you all for your continuing service to the Filipino people and ensuring our safety. Bilang mga frontliners din po, ngayong panahon na ito, salamat sa inyong serbisyo sa bayan, lalo na ngayon sa panahon ng uh, pandemya. Congratulations uh, and uh, thank you. Thank you, Senator Go. Majority Leader. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, before yes, Senator we... Villanueva is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Before we move for the approval for a plenary action, may we know if uh, Colonel Joel M. Lazo is around? Should be here. Would you like to ask uh, questions? No, no, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. I just wanted to know if he's there. And uh, we he just is here. He is here. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We just want. Would you to like to see him here questions. in front? No, no, it's okay. I, I can see him, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chairman, let me just put on record together with Congressman Apple Pancho, na hindi po madalas na mayroong kaming kababayan sa Bulacan na up for confirmation, and we're just so happy that uh, he's, he's part of this uh, healing. And uh, we want to put on record our uh, full support to our kababayan. Si Colonel uh, Joel Lasso po ay uh, uh, in his education in civilian and military institution must finish with distinction. Notably, uh, yung Masters in Public Management in uh, DAP with honors. He finished Marine Officers Basic Course in Philippine Marines in first place with rating of 92.97%, and he completed the command and general staff course in AFP uh, Staff College with grade of 94.11. We just want to put on record that we're very proud of him as our kababayan, uh, and uh, we wish him well. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator Villanueva. Majority Leader. Uh, yeah, Mr. Chairman, uh, before I make a motion, let me just uh, join Senator Joel Villanueva. Iba talaga, Mr. Chairman, basta Joel, no? Colonel Joel Lasso, Senator Joel Villanueva, Congressman Joel Mayo Almario. Mr. Chairman, for the motion, I move, I move to recommend to the plenary for the Commission's consent on the nomination of Lieutenant General Gilbert I. Gapley, Chief of Staff of the Armed Forces of the Philippines to the rank of General, and for the confirmation of the ad interim appointments of the 29 senior officers in the Armed Forces of the Philippines. I so move, Mr. Chairman. Second the motion, Mr. Chairman. Is there any objection? The Chair hears none. The motion is hereby approved. Leader. Mr. Chairman, there being no other matters to discuss, I move to adjourn this meeting. On motion of the majority leader, there being no objection, this meeting is hereby adjourned. Please stay put because Tuli uh, is a plenary. Thank you. Okay. The Senate President is here already.
pues is hereby called the order. Let us all pause for a minute of silent prayer. Please remain standing for the singing of the Philippine National Anthem. Bayang magiliw, pelas ng silanganan, alab ng puso, sa dibdib mo'y buhay. Lupang hinirang, dulan ka ng magiting, sa manlulupid, di ka pa sisigil. Sa dagat at bundok, sa simoy at sa langit mong bagal, may dilagang tula at awit sa paglayang minangahal. Ang kislap ng wataw at mo'y tagumpay na nagniningning. Ang bituwing na araw niya, kailan pa may di magdidilim? Lupa ng araw ng walhat at pagsinta, buhay ay langit sa piling mo. Aming ligaya na pag may mga api, ang mamatay ng dahil sa'yo. Mr. Secretary, will please call the roll. The Honorable Members of the Commission on Appointments. Advincula. Present. Agarao. Almario. Alvarez, Jr. Tagas. Chipeco, Jr. Present. Lon. Yes. Ferrer the Fourth. Heron. Go. Yes, sir. Present. Tiveros. Present. La Laxon. Marcos. Mm -hmm. Noel. Pancho. Pimentel the third. Po. Present. Ramirez Sato. Present. Hilda Jr. Present. Tolentino. Present. Villanueva. Present. Villar. Samora. Subiri. Present. Present. The chairman is present. With uh, three members physically present and 19 virtually present, for a total number of 22 members present, the chair declares the presence of a quorum. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Leader, yes. I move to dispense with the reading of the journal of the plenary session held on August 24, 2020, and consider the same as approved. Any objection? Hearing none, the motion is approved. The journal is approved. Mr. Mr. Chairman. Leader. May we now proceed to consider the recommendation of the Committee on National Defense on the nomination and ad interim appointments of 30 senior officers in the armed forces of the Philippines. Any objection? Chair, here's none. Consideration of the recommendation of the Committee on National Defense is in order. Mr. Chairman, I move that the Vice Chairperson of the Committee on National Defense, Senator Panfilo Lacson, be recognized. Senator Panfilo Lacson is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Majority Leader. Mr. Chairman, this representation as one of the Vice Chairpersons of the Committee on National Defense presided over a public hearing this morning to deliberate on the ad interim appointments of 29 senior officers of the Armed Forces of the Philippines and the nomination of one officer to the rank of general. Your committee, after deliberating on their qualifications and fitness during the said public hearing, determined that all of the 29 appointees and one nominee are fit and qualified 
to the ranks which they are respectively promoted or nominated, and has therefore ruled to recommend to the plenary the respective appointments and nomination for the confirmation and consent of this august body. It is my honor and privilege to recommend that this body give its consent to the nomination of Lieutenant General Gilbert I. Gapay to the rank of General. Our nominee is a fellow cavalier from PMA Sinagtala class of 1986. He graduated at the top of his class and obtained the most number of awards during his graduation rights, giving him the notoriety of, as the most decorated cadet in the history of PMA. He continues to earn his laurels in the long course of his career, one of the most coveted decorations, the Outstanding Achievement Medal, was bestowed on him in 2003. For his exceptional merit and valuable service, a number of distinguished service stars were conferred on him through the years. In 2017, as Deputy Commander of Eastern Mindanao Command, or East Min Com, in 2012, as the Commandant of the Armor School, Light Armor Division of the Philippine Army, and another one as the Assistant Chief of Unified Command Staff for Operations U3, Southern Luzon Command, and in 2010, as the Commanding Officer of the 3rd Mechanized Infantry Battalion, Light Armor Division, Philippine Army. He likewise earned the Meritorious Achievement Medal as the Commander of the Joint Task Force, Haribon of Ismin Com, which aims to expand the security measures in Davao City. Mr. Chairman, it is my honor and privilege to recommend that this body give its consent to the nomination of Lieutenant General Gilbert I. Gapay to the rank of general. I so move, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, uh, Senator, the former Senate President, Senator Aquilino Pimentel III, is recognized. Thank you. I'd like to second the nomination by delivering, delivering my co-nomination speech for our nominee. The Armed Forces of the Philippines is the protector of the people and the state. Its goal is to secure the sovereignty of the state and the integrity of the national territory that's in our constitution. So who else can lead and fulfill this constitutional mandate uh, if not the leader of our armed forces of the Philippines who is a man of honor, service, patriotism, with vast experiences, notable achievements and qualifications defeating the rank of general, making him the highest military officer in the armed forces of the Philippines. Our nominee, I'm proud to say, is a uh, batchmate of mine in the Ateneo, actually he's younger, but who would not claim the next uh, chief of staff of the armed forces of the, of the Philippines as his batchmate? Uh, although te te technically he's not, but he's a younger, younger uh, student in the Ateneo, and uh, on behalf of my batch, uh, power batch, uh, General, we are very proud of you, the youngest member of our batch. You have been the class valedictorian of the Sinagtala class of 1986, as mentioned by Senator Laxon, the most decorated cadet in the history of the PMA, 13 awards in total during his graduation rights. You have uh, undertaken courses not only here in the Philippines, but in the United States, Australia, Canada, on varied uh, uh, subject matters, from air education training, emergency management, all the way to chemical, biological, radioactive, and nuclear training. And uh, you have handled almost all possible responsibilities in uh, the Army and in the AFP. And as mentioned by Senator Bongo, you have been lauded for successfully securing the Mega Davao area, uh, including uh, after, especially after the bombing of the Rojas Night Market, and many other achievements. I don't know if this is the most unforget unforgettable of your assignments. You secured the Miss Universe 2017 event. Uh, would is that unforgettable, or would you rather uh, forget that, General? But at any rate, our nominee has left a uh, significant legacy in the Philippine Army by establishing the Army Mental Health Center. And uh, I hope you will continue as the good father of the Armed Forces of the Philippines to 
take care of your people, uh, General. So our nominee is has, have, uh, has uh, been uh, awarded several awards and decorations, including the Outstanding Achievement Medal, five Distinguished Ser Service Stars, four Gold Cl Cross Medals, Meritorious Achievement Medal, Gawad Sakaunlaran Medal, Bronze Cross Medal, 24 Military Merit Medals, Silver Wing Medal, five Military Civic Action Medals, four Military Commendation Medals, among others. Hindi na po na-research yung iba. So, ladies and gentlemen, my colleagues, it is my distinct privilege and honor to move that we give our consent to the nomination of uh, Gilbert Gapay to the rank of General and as AFP Chief of Staff. So move, Mr. Mr. President. Mr. Chairman. Oh, yes. Mr. Chairman. Uh, Senator Tiberos, recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, please allow me to express my uh, deep pride and great joy in supporting uh, the confirmation of General Gilbert Gapay as General Chief of Staff of the Armed Forces of the Philippines. Among the many notable things about him, he's a member of the PMAC Nagtala class of 1986, my Mista, and currently serves as the Armed Forces of the Philippines Chief of Staff. He received a Distinguished Service Star in 2017, among other years. He earned a Gold Cross Medal in year 2000, among other years. He established the Army Mental Health Center following the killing of Winston Ragos. He is also the most decorated cadet in the entire history of the Philippine Military Academy, one for the ages, Mr. Chairman, graduating with 13 awards. Truly, he is not only one of the best and brightest of our class, but he is also one of the best and brightest of our generation. Congratulations, mabuhay kayo, my snappy salute. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. All right, uh, as I mentioned earlier, any objection? The chair is done, the motion is approved. Congratulations, General Gabay. Yes, uh, Senator I would Lasso, also like to recommend to this august body the confirmation of the ad interim appointments of the following senior officials of the Armed Forces of the Philippines. Lieutenant General Jose C. Faustino, Jr. I so move, Mr. Chair. Any objection? Eating none. Approved. And Lieutenant General Franco Nemesio M. Gapal. I so move, Mr. Chairman. Any objection? Eating none. Approved. Mr. Chairman, it is likewise my privilege to recommend to this august body the confirmation of the ad interim appointments of the following, following senior officials, Major General Gilbert F. Saret. I so move, Mr. Chairman. Any objection? Hearing none, approved. Major General Alfredo V. Rosario, Jr. I so move, Mr. Chairman. Any objection? Hearing none, approved. Again, it is my honor to recommend to this commission the confirmation of the ad interim appointments of the following officials of the Armed Forces of the Philippines. Colonel Jaime R. Datuin. Philippine Army. I so move, Mr. Chairman. Any objection? Hearing none, approved. Colonel Maria Noel T. Tolentino, Philippine Army. I so move, Mr. Chairman. Any objection? Hearing none, approved. Colonel Frank Y. Manangkil, Philippine Army. I so move, Mr. Chairman. Any objection? Hearing none, approved. Colonel Enerito D. Lebeco, Philippine Army. I so move, Mr. Chairman. Any objection? Hearing none, approved. Colonel Rolando M. Paredes, Philippine Army. I so move, Mr. Chairman. Any objection? Hearing none, approved. Colonel Joel M. Lazo, Philippine Navy Marines. I so move, Mr. Chairman. Any objection? Hearing none, approved. Captain Ariel S. Palisok, Philippine Navy. I so move, Mr. Chairman. Any objection? Hearing none, approved. Captain Mateo G. Carido, Philippine Navy. I so move, Mr. Chairman. Any objection? Hearing none, approved. Captain Norsal D. Dimaporo, Philippine Navy. I so move, Mr. Chairman. Any objection? Hearing none, approved. Colonel Dennis F. Hernandez, Philippine Navy Marines. I so move, Mr. Chairman. Any objection? Hearing none, approved. Colonel Hilario C. Devera Jr., Philippine Navy Marines. I so move, Mr. Chairman. Any objection? Hearing none, approved. Colonel Saldi A. Dioneda, Philippine Navy Marines. I so move, Mr. Chairman. Any objection? Hearing none, approved. 
Captain Jose Rene P. Nartates, Philippine Navy. I so move, Mr. Chairman. Any objection? Hearing none, approved. Captain Romel T. Marcos, Philippine Navy. I so move, Mr. Chairman. Any objection? Hearing none, approved. Colonel Joseph S. Tobias, Philippine Navy Marines. I so move, Mr. Chairman. Any objection? Hearing none, approved. Captain Stephen A. Tubalya, Philippine Navy. I so move, Mr. Chairman. Any objection? Hearing none, approved. Colonel Filomeno P. Carayon, Philippine Navy Marines. I so move, Mr. Chairman. Any objection? Hearing none, approved. Captain Levy C. Carane, Philippine Navy. I so move, Mr. Chairman. Any objection? Hearing none, approved. Colonel Emerson M. De Los Santos, Philippine Navy Marines. I so move, Mr. Chairman. Any objection? Hearing none, approved. Captain John E. De Villa, Philippine Navy. I so move, Mr. Chairman. Any objection? Hearing none, approved. Colonel Stephen L. Cabanlet, Philippine Navy Marines. I so move, Mr. Chairman. Any objection? Hearing none, approved. Captain Edwina Lucrecia M. Taylor, Philippine Navy. I so move, Mr. Chairman. Any objection? Hearing none, approved. Colonel Eisen M. Perdido, Dental Service. I so move, Mr. Chairman. Any objection? Hearing none, approved. Colonel Rogelio Jericho B. Banagua, Dental Service. I so move, Mr. Chairman. Any objection? Hearing none, approved. And finally, Colonel Alan Gulapa, Nurse Corps. I so move, Mr. Chairman. Any objection? Hearing none, approved. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator Lasson. Um, Majority Leader. Mr. Chairman, there being no other matters to discuss, I move to adjourn. Any objection? Chair is done. The session is adjourned. <laughs> Congratulations. Congratulations.